Today is Thursday, August 25th, 2022, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. Today, my friend Lou sent me an article from Patheos titled, 20 Damning Bible Contradictions. Dun, dun, dun. The Bible's defeated. God's a lie. Anyways, that's not the case. So we spent some time talking about these 20 damning contradictions. Honestly, man... I used to know some people that worked with or wrote with or whatever, something for Patheos, and they were on their game. I don't know what's happened over the years. I I don't frequent the place often, but man, if this is any prediction or indication, these are weak. Not just like as a Christian who, you know, opposes these, but, uh, you you know, maybe tomorrow we'll spend some time talking to atheists about this. Maybe I'll have some of my atheist people look over this and give me their thoughts, because man, these quote contradictions are weak. Um, anyway, we talk about them, and you'll see for yourself. There's 20 of them. We make it a good ways through it. And the rest of the time, we are bombarded by talking with Hebrew Israelites. Peace be upon them. But my goodness, it is an obnoxious conversation. Um, let me know how that goes. Until next time, download our podcast to askachristian.podbean.com or wherever podcast can be downloaded from. What else do I need to tell you? Um... I think my kids infected me with some sickness from their school, so uh, we'll see if my voice holds up the rest of the week. If not, you may have to, um, I don't know, miss me for a day or two. I'm sorry. It will get better. Happy Thursday. See you later. (laughs) Hey, Lou, what's up? I was just reading your, um, you just sent me a Patheos article. Um. (laughs) You know how we always make fun of, well, make fun maybe strong, but, you know, strongly encourage people to not go to, you know, I mean, maybe it's a real the website I haven't checked, but like, you know, I hate God.com and, you know, parrot all the stuff that they would find at these like antagonistic, like anti-Christian websites. Patheos is pretty close to it. So, uh, yeah, Lou, I'm reading through some of the, uh, he sent me an article and it's about uh, 20 most damning Bible contradictions. And, uh, these are just, ugh. I mean, I guess I can monologue about it since no one else wants to talk. But it's the one we just talked about, like with, um, where was the king? Was it Hezekiah? Was he 22 or 42? And, you know, we we just talked about this and people act like it's some huge thing, like God doesn't exist because of like a monk's typo. So, you know, where they want to go is, well, Christians claim the Bible is the inspired word of God, which, by the way, a lot of things that the Christians claim, the Bible doesn't claim. The Bible says, you know, all scripture is inspired and God will be profitable for teaching and reproach and instruction, stuff like that. All scripture is useful. But I don't think the Bible actually claims to be the perfect and fallible word of God. But Christians make that claim, and I stand by it, because we, we've read it, and we've experienced it, and we've lived it, and we happen to believe that, yeah, it is infallible word of God. Um, so, you know, as such, people like to really hold us to that standard um, to a ridiculous level. So, you know, when Christians say, you know, the Bible's inspired, unfallible, inerrant word of God, we mean, yeah, like the original the original words that got put in the author's heads and they pinned to paper, that's it, inspired, no problems, none. And, um, you know, then they will try to extend that to ridiculous proportions and criticize those results. Um, there's a fallacy, what is that? Reductio ad absurdum, where they're like, take an argument that you're making, extend it beyond what you're actually saying, and then criticize ridiculous results that they've concocted in their own minds. Um, Anyway, so whenever they do that, hey, Mark, welcome. We're talking about the inspired word of God. So, you know, we don't claim that, you know, every single copy of every single scripture that's been copied by monks and different languages and all this other stuff, uh, you know, doesn't have a comma instead of a semicolon. Or, you know, apparently with the uh, Ezekiah or whatever, like the difference in the years is, I'm going to mess this up, but but the idea is if the proper number signifying the years of his age is like a vertical line, like, a, you know, like the vertical place in a T, um, then the copyist error, or maybe it wasn't an error, maybe it was a smudge that got read as an error, in one of these copies would be akin to like a slash like, you know, uh, www dot whatever slash, like a slash like that. So it's it's not quite vertical. It's a little offset. So that would be akin to what happened with the uh, age between like, what, 22 or 42 or something like that. 
And uh, everyone's like, oh, no, see, the Bible's got errors, the Bible's got errors. Well, the guy that pinned this for the very first time didn't do that. It's, you know, some monk, like, centuries later that copied it. And, you know, we're not... Anyways, so that's one contradiction. Lou, anywhere else you want to go with that? Mark, I'm getting hungry already. <laughs> Do you have anything to say on that, Michael, or are you still listening? Oh, no, I'm still listening. All right. I'll keep monologuing. Let's see what's next. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mark, Lou just sent me a, a Patheos article, and I was saying how, you know, it's funny when people go to, you know, they come up with things that we just know if they couldn't have read it from the Bible, because if they did, the, there's unless they just slam the book shut after a verse and like run away screaming with their hair on fire, they're going to read the verse right after after it, which will almost always answer whatever question they're talking about or shed context or shed light on it, which will prevent them from asking that question unless they just put their cards on the table and reveal their hand and show their dishonesty and that they don't care. Um, anyway, so, you know, as such, right, did you go to, like, IHateGod.com? Like, have you, if you've read this from the actual Bible, you will see that if you've, if you've read the verse before or usually directly after, there is no problem and there is no question because it just answers itself outright. So it's like, well, the only way you could come up with these questions is if you know what you're doing and you're dishonest, which I, I don't want to talk to you, or if you legitimately don't know. And it's like the only way you could not know is if you just, like, read this out of context like in a precept package or something like that, like somewhere where it it's like, we're not going to show you the verse before or after. We're just going to show you one verse and shroud it in mystery and not let you know what the rest of the text says. Uh, anyway, so um, <laughs> instead of I hate God.com, that, that's got to be a website. I should just check it out at this point. I think I will hang on. But, um, you know, he shared an article from Patheos and I'm like, well, you know, that's just about as bad. So um, maybe I should pin it at the top. One of the articles is um, the 20 most damning Bible contradictions and that Hezekiah age was the top of the list. Let's see. One talks about the size of Solomon's basin or cistern or whatever. Um, same thing. We're not saying that, you know, God made every single copy exactly the same. And, uh, you know, I know the Muslims also, by the way, fun fact, can't claim that themselves. There were multiple copies of the Quran. Peace be upon it. But um, the reason there aren't now isn't because of some divine inspiration. It's because all the dissenting copies were burned, set on fire. So, you know, if we did that with our Holy Bible, then, you know, we could have one copy that's exactly the same, too. But we don't burn things like that. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's a lot here about um, all have sinned and there is no, no one righteous, no, not one. And then it, it says there's like a contradiction for the ages, like they have no idea how to just read English, where it talks about, you know, um, where was it? Job. This man was blameless and upright, even as his life was going through hell because blah, 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 blah. So they're equating with Job never sinned to Job was blameless and upright. And I, I mean, again, like th this comes back to everyone's Pharisees. Either you're a disciple of Christ or you're a Pharisee. It doesn't matter what title you want to point, you know, where you want to point your flag on what title, it's either you're a disciple of Christ or for practical purposes, you're a Pharisee because you're doing exactly what they did. So you can say you're another religion. You can say you're a lack of religion. You can say you have whatever, um, secular humanist. But if you're not a disciple of Christ, you're a Pharisee. Like to be that pedantic and litigious like the Pharisees um, and say, oh, well, you know, all have sinned, all fall, sh fall short of the glory of God. No one is righteous. No, not one. And uh, no one is good but God. And then equate that to the quote where it says Job was blameless and upright. That doesn't mean Job never sinned in all of his life. And even if we granted that, even if we did grant that, that doesn't mean that Job would remain sinless his whole life. That doesn't, you know, if that stops and says, you know, up to this point in the story where it talks about Job, even if we granted, which no one would, but for sake of argument, if we granted Job was completely perfect, he could almost be God himself in every way up to that point, that doesn't address the rest of his life. So if he didn't sin up until that point where it's addressed, then, you know, the day after that was written, he could sin. The day after it's talking about in that story, he could sin. So anyways, 
don't be so focused on every jot and tittle of the law, even though none of it's going to pass away. Let God keep that track of that because when humans do, it gets messy and it gets wrong. And this is like the conversation with Francesco yesterday. It, it just bothers me, right? Like, I, I mean, all of it bothers me because I believe, you know, that Jesus is king and Jesus is Lord and Jesus is God. And if you don't end up on the right side of him for eternity, you're going to have problems. So for every, you know, Bible-believing Christian that doesn't want to see people, you know, go to this hell place, then it's bothersome. And we, we strongly urge you to prayerfully consider that the God of the Bible is true. You should follow Jesus um, while you have that choice to make. But it's extra bothersome when people like, plant their flag for all the wrong reasons. And they're like, I'm an atheist for every reason, but they say that they just lack a belief in a God. So it's like, you know, either like church hurt or, you know, this didn't make sense, or here's a contradiction that's really not a contradiction. All these other reasons. Oh, hey, Chris, all these other reasons. Um, I'm like, come on, guys, look, you should believe what I'm saying because I believe it's right. But even if you don't, I'm not forcing you to believe me. I'm not forcing you to, you know, follow God. Um, it's your decision but you should really, really, really not be an atheist or not be anti-Christian because of the reasons you give, because they're, they're just, they're so flawed. They're so faulty. Like the only reason you should say you don't believe in a God is because you espouse that you don't believe in a God. Not because you don't believe in a God because pastors were mean to you. Not because, well, there must not be a God because church people suck sometimes. These are all terrible reasons. They're valid points. Yeah, pastors can be mean. Church, church hurts a thing. You know, people can suck. But that doesn't have anything to do with whether a God or not exists, even if these people claim to represent the God. Um, anyway, that, that just bothers me on a whole different level. What's up, Chris? Do you feel the same way? Yep. All right. Lou shared a uh, – yeah, I'm just going to pin it. <laughs> Let me pin it. Lou shared an article because no one else was talking, so I've been monologuing. But it's um, from Patheos. Super awesome, awesome resource. Not really. It's total trash. But um, it was about the 20 most damning Bible contradictions. So we've been uh, talking, we've, I've been talking about that because uh, no one else is here to talk, but now you are. Those guys are idiots. <laughs> like, <laughs> now, now say that nicer. Let's practice. Let's practice. Okay, okay let's practice. These guys are woefully misinformed. Awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Woefully misinformed. We'll go with that. <laughs> it's just, it's like 2000 years of Christian history and, you know, some, you know, 22 year old atheist who took two philosophy classes in college is going to get together with his buddies over a few joints and some whiskey, and they're going to come up with all the Bible contradictions and write them down in a Patheos article. And we've defeated Christianity, man. Aren't we awesome? Pass the toke. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. And it's like, did you do any research beyond, like, reading, like, you know, atheist.blogspot.com? you know, retard.com. I mean, no, you didn't. It's just. Yeah. I was saying like how we always reference, like, you know, the, the maybe hypothetical, I hate God.com. And I'm like, don't get your information from that. If there's a Bible verse, read the verse, read the one before or after. And usually that makes your questions go away. Unless you went to, I hate God.com. And I'm like, is that real? So I'm just about to check and see if it's, it's gotta be real. Yeah, and they never, they, you know, you notice that the atheists, they don't want to quibble with, like, Muslims or anybody else. They only want to deal with Christianity, mainly because we don't chop their heads off when they get mad. So, I hate God.com, by the way. Uh, when you go there, it tries to auto-download a um, TIFF file. So probably in the interest of not getting a virus, I'm just not going to explore that further. Virus? I don't know. I, I don't know, Techie Chris. You want to check that out and let us know what's going on? It's uh, IHateGod.com. Apparently, it, it seems to be a real site, but it tries to auto-download stuff whenever you go there. Sounds like a winner to me. 
Let's see. I wonder if there's a more reputable IHateGod.org by any chance. <laughs> Get this domain. I cannot believe that that's might not be a, a good place. one to buy. You know what? Maybe you should, I, I mean, someone's probably got it. They're like, oh, for seventy-five thousand dollars, we'll sell it to you. Yeah, if there's one of those not taken, yeah. maybe you should get it and just turn it into a total, like, you know, gospel-centered website. Yep. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> yeah, I think it's time for that. Don't you do websites? I don't do websites. Don't you do websites? When people pay me. Oh. Well, <laughs> you're going to get paid in crowns if you do it, so, you know, that's better. Store up treasures in heaven, Nate. I know, that's that's a that's a good point. I, I need to repent of that. Except I don't do any coding, so like you know, if it's like very, very, very uh, you know, basic bare bones stuff like that. But if it requires like any uh, any real thought, then I have other people for that. Except man, like you know, hosting stuff is not cheap. Like you know, the the guy I work with, he usually does all that stuff, so he has like you know, huge huge websites and like huge like you know, crazy business partners and stuff. So everything everything I do, like you know, I just get through him. That's already got like tons of storage space like you know all, all this stuff like allocated so you know he just like breaks off like you know bits and pieces as needed so yeah if you just like host stuff on your own i mean you know people are like oh what's 50 dollars a month i mean must be nice on your throne of gold like i mean 50 dollars a month is 50 dollars a month well that you know like so i have a part of my my business is that we resell LT commuter restaurants. So it's it costs me fifteen dollars a month and then I charge them twenty five so I make a tidy profit. But like my bill when you know when the money rolls in on the first my bill when I get billed on the first is now up to like five hundred bucks a month. It's little little bits of fifteen bucks a month. It adds up. I know and, and just business stuff like I just don't have a brain. Like you know it <laughs> Hopefully it's still a virtue to like, you know, admit what you don't know or admit your flaws, like anything to do with business and money. I just, it, it, I'm just missing that part of a brain. Like I just, I don't have it. Even if I had the ability to learn it and grasp it, I don't know if I would want to. Like I just, I just somehow as intrinsically as I am created in the image of God with his morality upon me, I am intrinsically somehow void of just a business mind and way to like shamelessly self-promote and like turn, turn nothing into money. I just don't have that ability. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I just don't understand it. I mean, you know, they say God won't give you more than you can handle. I, I don't know if that's necessarily a biblical principle. What well, temptation? Okay, yeah, beyond what you can bear. I, I don't know if we'd be getting into the realm of temptation with this, though. But you know, people typically say that, you know, God won't give you more more than you can handle. Um, not talking about temptation, just life stuff. But um. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I can't, uh, you know, uh, don't. I'm, I'm not so business and money savvy. Because if I were, um, you know, maybe I would be, uh, you know, the next televangelist, and be like, oh, Jesus is great, but you know, here's my cash app. I, Daddy needs a jet. So, uh, you know, maybe the reason I'm just terrible at business stuff is because I could not be trusted if I was good at business stuff. That's how I rationalize my failure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I haven't been awesome at business my whole life. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm still learning stuff all the time, um, you know, but I'm just, the way that I'm doing things now is I've set micro goals. Um, this is something that uh, I've been reading about. So I have a daily um, billable hours goal now. And so if I can, if I can do my minimum amount of billable hours every day, um, and then there are some days that you go over, and there's some days you don't get any. If it all averages out to my to my goal, then um, I'll have driven my revenue up by like thirty percent over a year, which is great. Well, that's nice. My if I can do like you know a couple bills a week, I'm uh, I'm living the high life. Well, Chris, why don't you uh, pick one of your favorite damning Bible contradictions, and uh, let's go over that. Let's see. I've made it to the all of sin part. Okay. 
on its face, like not even reading the Bible, just reading their own. Um, I mean, I think you nailed it. A bunch of people on like, you know, whiskey and joint night dug this up. Addendum. Why worry about sin? Every one of us is already saved. Oh, really? Paul draws a parallel between one, the man who ah. got us into this mess, Adam, who ate the forbidden fruit. At least they didn't say apple. Good job, Patheos. Pat on the head. Um, ate the forbidden fruit and gave mankind original sin. And the one that got us out, Jesus, whose per perfect sacrifice, listen to this quote, saved us all. And then they quote the scripture that they mess up. Okay. So their words, the perfect sacrifice who saved us all. And then what the Bible actually says, for justice through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners. So also through the obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous. In their own word, they're equating many with all. Um, I mean, there's a lot more to it, but even if I just read their text for what it is, Pharisees, say atheist all you want. You are Pharisees. It's just so dumb. I mean, like, God's rules keep changing is number five. God made an everlasting covenant with Abraham, but then he tore that one up and made another one with Moses. You know so little theology, like, it makes my spine hurt. Like, <laughs> dude like really like you don't understand the difference between the abrahamic covenant and the mosaic covenant like <laughs> what like what oh my gosh like just right there i'm like okay clearly you should put the keyboard down and step away because you don't know any theology at all and this is sad, right? Because there's lots of – however it happens. I mean the God of this world has blinded these people's eyes. I mean you know, it's biblical wisdom whether they believe it or not. But how many people do you think read this stuff and they're like, I don't know. I'm shaky. Should I be a Christian? Should I not be? And then they read this stuff and for some reason, spiritual blindness, they're just like, yes, even though these guys contradict themselves in the, the span of a paragraph – what they say is true. There is no God. I'm an atheist now. It's like, no. It's so wrong. Um, Charlie, come to Candy Mountain. Dude, you don't know Charlie Wheeler anymore. Nate, you're getting upset. You oh, wait, what? I, I, unicorn? No, I, I don't know Charlie the Unicorn. I did see a bullet right now. Okay, well, before I do, funny story. I saw a unicorn meme today, and it was like uh, David and Robert, and they were getting on the ark. And, uh, you know, they're like, all right, two by two, everyone come up on the ark, come up on the ark. And they, they had like giraffes, lions, all these other animals, you know, going going two by two. And then it's like uh, someone's reading a storybook to a kid, I think. And it's like uh, two unicorns meet each other, and they're like, I'm Robert, what's your name? And he's like, I'm Dave. And they're, they're like, have these puzzled looks, they're like, uh oh. And they're like, and that's how unicorns went extinct. <laughs> Did it take a second? I, got <laughs> I, I was reading the next contradiction. I'll Google Charlie the Unicorn while you give your thoughts on this. Two women spread the word of the empty tomb. Or did they? Dun, dun, dun. Women discovered the empty tomb of Jesus and returned to tell others. The women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Matthew 8, 28, 8. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. Luke 24, 9. Or did they? Dun, dun, dun. I'm thinking of a law and order chime in my head. Dun, dun, dun. But it's coming out the other way. Mark has a different ending. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Mark 16, 8. And that's how the original version of the Gospel of Mark ended. You want to give your thoughts on that, and I will Google Charlie the Unicorn? Oh my gosh. This one's just. Oh. So it's painful. It's like painful ignorance. Oh. So, yeah, Mark 16, 8. They were afraid and trembling. It doesn't mean that they didn't later on go and talk to the disciples. Clearly they did. Like, what? It, it, just, like, on its face, it's not a contradiction. Dude, there are 
difficult contradictions in the scripture. I mean, let's face it, there are a few difficult ones. They have explanations, like um, Jesus with the bread of presence and David. Um, he mentions the name of the previous, of I'm sorry, of the um, next high priest after Abathar. And so you're left with the contradiction of, well, wait a minute, in the story originally it says that Abathar was the high priest and then his son was the high priest later on and Jesus mentions him, you know, as the one who gave David the bread of presence. And then it's like, okay, there is an explanation to that one, but it is it is a tough one. There's like full academic papers written on this subject. Um, and there is, again, there is an explanation, but like if you're going to try to point out difficult Bible contradictions, why don't you start there instead of, hey, we don't have third grade reading comprehension. Let us demonstrate how. <laughs> In other news, I just Googled Charlie the Unicorn. I remember someone shared this to me a long time ago. <laughs> so funny. Good job, Chris. Good job. I would recommend it. Okay. Um, Come on, Charlie. We're going to the mountain. We're going to Papio's Mountain, Charlie. There's candy there. I don't know if we should just go one by one, but, uh, you know, by, by the way, if anyone else wants to join us and uh, throw out a topic, go ahead. Until then, you are destined to listen to us talk about the 20, which so far it's, it's down to at least 17 because that's as far as we've got. But um, was the 20 most damning Bible contradictions? Turns out that's not true. Um, let's see. Number three. You mean we've talked about like four different things and that was only up to number three? Okay. Um all Christians are united in what they believe about Jesus, right? Everyone sigh. <sighs> Jesus said, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, that I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I am them and you and me so that they may be brought to complete unity. I appeal to you that all of you agree with one another what you say, and there will be no division among you, but that you will be perfectly united in mind and thought. I, I, I wish I could read this in Charlie the Unicorn's voice, or the, the people talking to Charlie, but I, I don't think I can. I'll just read it in a snarky voice. That's a nice thought. <laughs> I'm just going to read it. That's a nice thought. But has any prayer failed more spectacularly? Christianity is more than just Roman Catholics and Baptists and Methodists and maybe a few more. There are now lies 45,000 denominations, to, side note, to be accurate, it's more like 9,000, which is still like 8,999, way too many. But the reason they get 45,000 denominations, which some genius came up with like 200,000, which is the same formula as 45, just extrapolate even more ridiculous. But it, it would be like if there's two, for example, if there's like two Baptist churches like that filed 501c3 paperwork, so they're technically separate entities and like, you know, different states that require, you know, different forms or whatever, then they, it could be the exact same church with the exact same belief yet, because, you know, one's first Baptist church of Delaware and one's first Baptist church of Maine, they file different paperwork, even if they have the exact same statement of faith and everyone together is like, amen, they count that as two denominations because it's like different paperwork filing. So they're like, okay, so all the Baptist churches that may have the exact same statement of faith, However many of those there are, they call different denominations. However many Methodists they are, they could believe the exact same thing, all different denominations. That's how they get that. That is, ah, uh, is it too strong to say lies from the pit of hell? Or are we giving the devil too much credit? That's just stupidity. Um, anyway, it's more it's, like, yeah, it's dumb. yeah, I mean, it's more like 9,000. It's still too many. So, you know, they have a point, but it's a small point that they're not making. So, you know, if, if you want a Christian to but help the, you make that case. Yeah. But like but like the John 17 prayer is talking about the universal church, the people that are in Christ Jesus. Denominations, I, I don't have a problem with denominations. I believe denominations are ordained by God. Um, and that denominations serve an extremely useful purpose. And, and we see that every day on Clubhouse. When I get upset and I get in a fight with Steph or Roy or somebody over whatever little secondary doctrine that we want to talk about because because 
Do I ever get upset with any of you guys when we talk about the essentials? Nope. Like, there's never a problem between any Christians on Clubhouse when we talk about the essentials, and we have proven that time and time and time again. It's when we get to the secondary issues that people are like, well, that's dumb, or I don't think that, or whatever, or, you know, I'm an Arminian, and you're a Calvinist, and you're bad, or whatever it is. It's like, the denominations serve a useful purpose, because I can walk into my church, and I'm not going to get into an argument with somebody about the doctrine of grace. Well, my church is a little different. My church is, is much more ecumenical than that. But, um, but if I walk into a Presbyterian church, like, there's not going to be a knockdown, drag out fight about infant baptism. There's just not, because everybody's going to think the same thing, and they're all going to the same Presbyterian church. It makes for much more peaceful uh, churches on the secondary issues. But on the primary issues, everybody agrees that's an evangelical, you know, and, and, why we say things like EO and Catholics and Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians is because they reject the essentials of the historic Christian faith, not just the secondary issues like, oh, well, you know, you believe in having a smoky censor in your church service, like, you know, like, I don't care about that. What I care about is like, oh, you don't believe in salvation by faith alone. That's kind of a problem. You know, whatever, Mr. Mormon, you reject salvation by faith alone, sorry, you're not a Christian, Um, you know, and so when we deal with those 9,000 denominations, like you're talking about, Nate, I I mean, I would say probably half of them would be evangelical in some stripe, and the other half would be something else, Um, you know, know, or cults or whatever else, And, and I think that they're incredibly useful, like, I don't want to go to church and have to have a knockdown drag out about you know, tongues ceasing, you know, it's just not what I want to go to church to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm happy to have that talk on Clubhouse with some of my friends. Um, and we can have a, dis- we can have a, you know, productive conversation about it, I believe. But like, I don't want to go do that at church with people I have to share communion with. And then they get all upset because I don't believe the same secondary issues. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's comfortable, right? Like, we have preferences, and, you know, we have our comfort zones. That's why we call them comfort zones. Like, you know, we find a place that suits us, but it's a luxury. So, so that's why we have these nominations. Like, I, I dare say, if, you know, we were like the persecuted church in China, probably not a lot of denominations. They're probably, you know, very, very much on the same page because they don't have time, you know, for endless theology and, like, you know, deep Berean-type study. I'm sure they would like that. But, you know, they're worried about not being caught and murdered for their faith. So, you know, there's probably not a whole lot of doctrinal denominational differences because they don't get that far. They're like, Jesus, salvation, yes, eternal life when we die, which is probably going to happen sooner than later. Um, Yes, yes, uh, let's all get on the same page. Let's all be united. Just pray to Jesus for, uh, you know, um, under this persecution. So I I dare say, and maybe we'll get to test that theory some point in America, the way things are going, who knows. But – um. You know, you're going to see a lot less doctrinal quibbles and a lot more, you know, returning, keeping the main thing, the main thing, if if we're put in that same position, too. So, you know, if um, I don't know if the four horsemen were to show up in the sky and, um, you know, they're like, oh, tribulation is just a joke. haha. OK, all the Christians, you know, figure out what you want to do. Do you want to talk about cessation of gifts or do you want to, like, huddle together under one name and, uh, you know, look to the east, your redemption draws near type thing? then I think a lot more people are going to be like, okay, Methodist person, Pres- Presby person, okay, Assemblies of God person, forget all that. Let's just go, uh, you know, prepare for the imminent meeting of our Lord. That's logical, yeah, right? It makes sense 100%. to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're totally right, dude. There's not a whole bunch of denominations in China in the house churches. Like, they're they're persecuted, man. It, it, it just doesn't exist. And, you know, in, in, in early Christianity, there weren't, like, the reason that doctrine didn't develop and you didn't see major, um, you know, doctrinal developments and, and, you know, delving deeper into theology was because they were worried about their next piece of bread and where they could stash their children when the soldiers showed up. I mean, you ain't got time for it, you know? I mean, ain't got no time. Yeah, so like, people are all like, oh, yeah, the Trinity didn't, you know, people didn't talk about the word Trinity until Trulli in the second century. <laughs> yeah, like, they were talking about how to avoid being so? slaughtered by lions. 
Yeah, like they're 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 being chased by hyenas in the arena. <laughs> they're not worried about parsing John Ten. <laughs> like seriously, like this ah. this is what this is what you get. I mean, I. Um, I don't know. I guess let's go down the list. Um, no, as far as we get, if someone yes, wants to say something, I do have to dip into church, though. Hold on. So let me let me see if there's anybody around because I can't be loud in the office when I'm working. So sure, sure. Sneak about the church. Let us know when you're done. I'll talk to you. Get back. All right. Number four. Oh, this is gonna be so long. I no just have one. this great vision of you like running away from hyenas in a in a dirt arena though, so that's pretty good. Would you wave your arms wildly as you're running from the hyenas, or would you, you know, like stand and face? Well, I, I would run because I mean, I, I I don't know. I'm trying to balance like you know my my bravado. Like I would fight them all and eat their bones. Um, you know, lies versus what I would actually do. So I'm, I'm trying to balance this. So let's see. Um, I, I wouldn't know unless I'm actually in that situation. Side note, or, or, you know, important point, I don't want to be in that situation to find out. But I like to think that, no, I wouldn't run, because if you run, I mean, you're certainly getting caught and bitten or whatever, because you're not faster than they are. So it's not like a, a bravery thing that I wouldn't run. It's like a, if you run, you're definitely getting caught. Um, versus if you if you face them, they're still a dumb animal. So it's like, you know, all they know is, is bite and eat. So if you run, they know chase, bite, eat, kill. Um, so, so if you take at least one thing out of the equation, which is running, and you stand and face them, I mean, facing multiples <laughs> would not be fun. But um, I, I, I honestly don't know. Like, um, I, I think I'd like to face them, and as one of them, like, I don't know, try to lunge or something, just take a, a rare chance I would have and kind of, you know, like, I, I don't know, sidestep or something and try, just try to get the thing in some kind of a chokehold. And I don't know. Is it completely nuts to think I'd choke out a hyena and the others would just patiently watch me do it or would they jump on and that would be a quick end? I don't know, but running, I, I wouldn't run because if you run, you, there's like absolute, there's probably no chance anyway, but there's like neg like less and less of a no chance if you run. How about you, Chris? Let's use lions for you. I like lions better. I'm back. Did you hear the lions? No? No lions? Oh, no. I didn't hear the lions. So I got a text message from a Nimrod. A Nimrod? No, not the Nimrod. Oh, yeah, you want to have a room with 800 people in it and, like, hours and hours of conversation about two verses? Put Nimrod in the title. Hunter of old. <laughs> people yeah, yeah, want to go on it. for hours about like you know oh the daughters of the daughters of men and the sons of god and blah 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 and i'm like just shut up very little patience for such things is that you playing the organ or is someone uh, practicing their pipe organ oh that was the boot chime for a mac oh my bad you said church i heard church organ yeah yeah i was giving you the uh, hyena scenario except I, I like lions better so uh how would you react <laughs> Lions, lions would be more challenging for sure. I don't know though. Hyenas are real vicious, man. I mean, watch the Lion King for uh, you know statistical analysis. Totally true. Hey, it's Ephraim, right? Ephraim, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Ephraim. Yeah. How I are you? Just, I'm doing well. I was just going through the. Um, 20 most damning Bible contradictions. Have you lost faith? No, no. <laughs> I feel like. What's your uh, favorite one? I'm still going through the list, but um, I feel like people will use one maybe inconsistency to throw out the whole thing, and I just can't get behind that because. Um, um, 
it's my understanding that if different people are writing different books, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all on the same page when they're writing it. So there might be some inconsistencies, but that still doesn't um, throw out the whole um, like message or, or, or ideology. It's just that different people put it together. If it was one person writing it and there's inconsistencies, then I would say, hmm. But if it's different people writing it, then I, I would I would take into consideration that like it, it it's it, 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 there, there there might be some you know some variance in how things are going on and they, like how people understand things and, and understandings. I I can't throw away the whole thing because so you know, yeah I, I would so I would agree with what you say, but mm -hmm. I I also would say that what you said isn't what's happening. So if what you right. said did happen, then I would still agree. I mean, don't mm -hmm. throw out the Jesus with the Genesis. But uh, I, I believe that didn't happen. So, you know, when there's these, incon quote, inconsistencies that are going to, like, you know, get rid of all of Christendom, um, it's usually not that case at all. And uh, even if one person wrote the entire Bible somehow, if right. one person did it, then there would, just from a human standpoint, there would probably be inconsistencies in their whole Bible or in the, in the Bible still, even if it was one person, because it's a lot to write. So, you know, when we say it was divinely inspired by God, you know, we believe ultimately that God is the author, like, you know, the Holy Spirit inspired people. But the point is, it's not inconsistencies like that because it's different authors. It's just like, you know, something like a copier, like number one. I, I, yeah, the number one most damning contradiction, they think, um, is the different age of like King Ezekiah. Um, because, you know, one, one uh, book says he was like, 20 22 and the other says he's like 42 and there's not a contradiction there's not a problem like what it what it, the actual answer is it was a copier and you know they will try to poke on this and and fight against it because they think you know when christians say you know the bible is the incorruptible infallible perfect word of god and it is we claim that we mean that we believe that but they try to extend that to even proportions beyond what the christian who makes that claim will extend it to and then they try to criticize that result so like if a christian which I am, which will say, I believe everything I said, the Bible's perfect, infallible, inspired word of God. And, and then if they say, hey, what do you mean by that? I'll be like, great, glad you ask. I believe, you know, the original words, the original scriptures given to the original authors is infallible. It's perfect. It's exactly what God wanted to convey. And turns out, uh, uh, the claim is, that's exactly what happened. So when we get to the age of he King Hezekiah, peace be upon him, um, we see that there was a, there was a copier. So, so by definition, copy error is not the original. So if someone's going to say, Nate, are you saying the infallible perfect word of God applies to every single copy, all like millions and millions, I don't know, probably a billion copies at this point? Um, is that perfect in every way with no errors? I'm like, no, no one's saying that. No one's talking about that. Like, you know, you could have people for completely nefarious reasons being like, oh, yes, I'm a secular humanist, anti-militant atheist. Um, but I'm making a copy of the Bible. Should that be infallible? I would hope, but I'm not going to say that. So, you know, we're talking about the original scriptures. Um, and, and anyway, so the copier, it, it would be something like Chris, Chris would know the accurate answer, but my paraphrasal is it would be something like you're making a T, right, with a vertical line and a horizontal line uh, three quarters way up. Well, it would be like if the age that's supposed to be written was in like lines, like straight vertical T lines, um, and then the discrepancy is something equivalent to like, you know, www dot something slash, like one of those slash markers, it would be like, instead of making a vertical line of a T, they make a slash. And they're saying that because a copyist monk did this some, some time, hundreds of years later, that Christians are wrong. The Bible's flawed. Christianity doesn't exist and they hate God, but they don't believe in God. But if there is a God, then they hate God. I, I know I'm, I'm doing what I accuse them of taking what they don't say and criticizing it, but you know, deal with it. Um, you know, the base point is true. And then I just added flavor for fun. Welcome, Matt. What's up, Matt? Sorry, one second. Uh, I'm just, just eating. Um, I caught part of what you were saying then. Um, is it the case that any Bibles exist with no copying, copying er errors? Well, sure. Uh, so I, I want to make sure we're on the same page. So is it possible that copies of the Bible exist with no errors, just in the in the just in the rule of possible or rule of um, 
the word's escaping me. I want to say possibilities, but that's wrong. But just the rule of odds, there has to be someone out there who has perfectly copied the scriptures with absolutely zero errors differing from the originals. Like, I, I can't immediately, immediately point to a Bible or something, but just in the rule of odds, sure, it's possible that there is a perfect, you know, every comma, every semicolon, every equivalent of that in the original language, no errors. But that's also happenstance. That doesn't mean we're claiming that, you know, all copies are infallible. Are we on, are we on the same line of thought so far? Um, I, I think so. Although, how would we go about distinguishing which copy, if any, is actually infallible? Well, the reason we know that there are certain copyist errors is because of the originals. And in many cases, we have the original copies um, written on animal hides and everything. Like they've been like digitally imaged at this point. I, I think you can find a lot of what, what they have at, um, is it codexnaticus.org or .com? But it, like all the earliest manuscripts, even the ones written on animal hides and skins, they have these digital images. So a lot of the originals, people are like, they're lost to time. We don't have these anymore. In, in a lot of cases, we actually do. So the reason they found out some of these copy errors is because they look at the earlier manuscripts or the originals and or all com combinations. And they're like, okay, one of these things is not like the other. We have 100 copies and some of the original here. Um, 99 of them say the exact same thing, but one of them has a slight discrepancy. So that's how we find out. Yeah, and, and we don't have the autographs anymore, but what we do have is um, a preponderance of the evidence through textual criticism. And so when we take the thousands and thousands of manuscripts that we have that are dated very early to very late, we compare them and we can get at what the original autographs said. In fact, the statistical analysis that's been done on the New Testament is that it's 99.5% um, what the autograph said because of the agreement of so many manuscripts. And so when you look at modern textual criticism, the Bible continues to get more and more accurate as time goes on um, because uh, we, we keep discovering new manuscripts, we keep discovering, you know, you know, Qumran cave, things like that. Um, and so a lot of these things that had been like, for, for instance, the uh, Johnine, uh, the comma Johnine, right? So in 1 John 5, 7, you've got some stuff that was a copyist error in the King James. Well, that's now been excised from all modern Bibles. So you don't have that copyist error in there anymore. And Christians are extremely... Um, up front and forward about textual variants, um, the state of textual criticism, and we try to be as accurate as humanly possible to get back to what the autograph said. And then any other copyist errors, like Nate was saying, they don't change the meaning of the text or any major Christian theologies. They are simply things like, oh, yeah, the, there was a, there was a, uh, uh, an incorrect uh, character written here, or there was a copyist note out to the side that got added to the text by accident um, in a single manuscript. And so um, they also consider any copyist notes on the actual manuscript as textual variants. And so they add those to the number of textual variants, even though they're not even in the body of the text. So there's there's a lot of really cool stuff on textual criticism. Even the most uh, anti-Christian uh, textual critics will admit that what we have for the New Testament and the Old Testament is incredibly accurate. In fact, it's the most accurate ancient documents of any kind without any peer. <clears throat> okay, so if we should accept um, the consensus of modern scholarship on what the Bible actually says, should we also accept the consensus that, say, for example, uh, Moses was a fictional character? No, we don't accept the consensus of modern scholarship. Um, what we do is we look at the evidence ourselves, and we don't need the consensus of modern scholars to tell us anything about it. We can simply look at the data itself. And so I, I think that most modern scholars are morons, and I think that they don't they have a lack of ability of reading. 
Um, I think that most PhDs can't read on a basic third grade level. Um, and I can back that up with evidence um, that uh, postmodernism has completely annihilated um, academia and is now wending its way into the sciences. And it's tragic and horrible, and it will be society and civilization changing when you basically have scientists talking about, yep, well, we can't really know anything. Well, they also, Your job is science. Well, Hang on, quick uh, tech note. The way you can back up these claims, you say, um, could you also back up from your mic just a little bit? It sounds like you're, uh, you're, it, it's like halfway down your throat. Um, a lot of pops and statics. Uh, just uh, techie note. Chris, um, yeah. and hang on, what did I? Maybe that's all I want to say. Uh, yeah, Matt, go ahead and respond if you like. Sorry, um, who was the mic comment directed towards? Uh, Chris. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Oh, sorry. Oh, is this better? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, actually, yes, sounds so. On, on this end, on this end, Chris sounded sounded pretty good. I don't know. Um, maybe it's a connection thing. I don't know. Uh, no, he it just sounded really, like he was getting a little, little. No, he was really. Yeah, he's, on my... yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm I'm just um, digesting what uh, Chris said there. He said he said quite a lot, so I have to kind of uh, matter. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, while you digest, but... I'll. Or, or yeah, while well, you digest, I'll, I'll say something because I, I, I remember what I wanted to say. Um, you know, the, the thing is, though, like, again, Pharisees, this will be the word of the day, right? Just write that down. That's the word of the day. Um, for, so when we're talking about, you know, are there copy errors and how much does it matter? Like, it's it's like zero seconds before we're like off in the weeds, right? Because no copy, no no one I've ever heard dispute. And if they do, you know, if someone does bring them to me, let's talk. But I've never heard anyone dispute. Because as soon as you say, you know, this has nothing to do with the core of Christianity and start, you know, saying the gospel, um, it's like people want to pull the cover over their head and run. Uh, it's like, well, well, let's try it. I, I don't mean, okay, for example, look, in the Bible, if we want to talk about like the 20 most damning Bible contradictions, uh, like the Patheos article we're working our way through, one of them is the age of Hezekiah, Hezekiah the king. And it, this has nothing to do with Christ, salvation, the gospel, the good news, eternal life, the things Jesus says you must get right, that I've never heard anyone dispute and say, well, you know, this is not an accurate copy. This is not an accurate record. Like, j that just can't be done. And if, if someone is out there that does dispute it, talk to me. You'll be the first one ever because, y you know, that wouldn't be a good position to put yourself in to be taken seriously because it's just not disputed. Like, no matter how many copies that have, like, ancient jots and tittles and like little commas are out of place or ages mismarked in the Old Testament or anything like that. None of the copies. Take the most copy-error-ridden copy -ridden manuscript you can find, and I guarantee, I'm, I'm asserting this, I guarantee it will have the accurate gospel of the stuff Jesus says, hey, you have to get this right. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is it. Believe in me and live forever. If you don't believe in me, You've condemned yourself already. It is all about belief. For those who call in the name of the Lord will be saved. If you believe in the death, almost done, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, you will have eternal life. Be his disciple. Repent. Stuff you know is wrong, stop doing it. None. I, I, I can just assert this with make my claim is 100% accuracy, um, that you're not going to find any copies of any Bible that's going to mess that up. So the things that you must get right, the Bible absolutely gets right, and I've never seen anything. Uh, add the Apocrypha, add the Book of Enoch, add anything you want um, that will mess up the gospel. Um, and and there's your challenge, just for anyone that would like to take that upon themselves. So anyways, we can return to you know these copy errors that supposedly some think will damn Christianity, but you're really like changing some ages here and there and some sizes of some basins and cisterns here and there and some cubits of measurement here and there. Um, and it's nothing that has anything to do with Jesus or the gospel. There's your sermon for today. Uh, have you had time to digest yet? Or, Philip, you wanted to say something, I think. Did you want to say something? Well, you know, it's one of the things I think is interesting is where we place authority. And a lot of people want to place authority in basically the outcomes. They want to give the outcome credence before they actually, you know, build upon can we actually logically follow different steps in evidence and so on and so forth. And, you know, both Christians and non-Christians like to do the exact same thing. The only thing I would say is that um, 
on one side, it seems more prevalent that they, you know, defeat and say that these things aren't real um, for the sake of what? Like, I, that would be my question, because a lot of times, most people that have, um, and, and this isn't, this is just the, the culture we live in, most people in America have an anti-Christian bias that they don't admit they have. And, you know, if you're willing to lay that on the table first before you have those discussions, I'm a lot more respectful than it just coming out with just different kind of like, you know, stances that, you know, Christians have no substantiated belief system um, that's built on actual evidence through time and manuscripts and different historical evidence. And anybody that you look at, I mean, you can find atheists out there that will say that claim doesn't actually hold water. But it's funny when people come into rooms like this and act like those claims do hold water. There's a reason that every two years there's a new movie about how Jesus married Mary or um, Mary was actually who Jesus was or whatever it is, because there's a fascination, which is basically knocking over Christianity. Well, I think I, I think that Roy, Roy has one point that's spot on and it's an either or. Um, I don't know about the, the or, but the either is, you know, people people have a bone to pick with Christianity. They they espouse they just lack a belief in it all all nice and even mannered like I just don't don't have a problem with God you guys are fine but if you talk to them for five seconds it's not long before they get super emotional and you know after an extended period of time it usually comes back to you know they they either need to like see, as Roy says which it's a claim which I believe they need to sear their conscience more and they need to to like further in their mind get more evidence for this case they're making that god doesn't exist and christianity's wrong usually traced back to not just hey man i just lack a belief in a god that's it but it usually traces back to they very much believe in god it was like church hurt or some external thing or they blame god for a tragedy in their life and now every time they talk to the christians or read you know 20 most damning bible contradictions they're like oh the christians say this this god is infallible and the word of god is infallible and uh, this article from Patheos that can be debunked just by reading their own article um, is, is somehow legitimate evidence that, you know, against Christianity. Therefore, I have a better, uh, you know, I, I'm more comforted in my espousal of disbelief in religion at this point. No, so, uh, you know, oh. it helps them. To, it helps them to. Yeah, it helps them to, like, sear their conscience, even though they won't admit it. And they don't even probably know that's what they're doing. But in some in some sort of way, I believe that's exactly what's happening, because if they really think, hey, these Christians made me mad. I have a lot of problems. I'm angry at God, which, by the way, is fine. Uh, work through that. Uh, don't work away from it. Work through it. Um, but, you know, if if they're angry at God, that forces them to still be like, yes, there is a God and I'm not in control um, ultimately of, of things. There is a God above me in control of everything in existence. And I'm not that God. Um, and it forces them to confront uncomfortable things. Otherwise, uh, or other than that, they just have to be like, no, no, God doesn't exist. God doesn't exist. Oh, I can finally relax. I can finally take a break. I don't have to worry about God, judgment, working through these anger issues. Um, and that may make them temporarily feel better at the expense of, you know, confirmation bias, brainwashing themselves. And, you know, I, I would say being wrong, which is terrible, versus taking uh, the, the hard road, which is, yes, I'm mad at God. Yes, these things happen. I'm not going to run away from God and brainwash myself into thinking he doesn't exist. I'm going to confront God, be angry, express my anger, um, yet not sin and work through this and come out on the other side much better for it. And then looking back, I'm like, yes, I understand this was a trial in my life. I've grown so much. All these other amazing things could not have happened had I not done that. I'm so glad I didn't like go the other direction. Nate, I wanted so to ask you something. Yeah, it's, yeah go um, ahead. You know what I've noticed a lot much lately, a lot lately is um, not so much that people don't, um, they're not so much that they are atheists. But what I'm noticing a lot of is people um, kind of saying they don't believe in God or they don't believe in religion. They're spiritual. And I feel like that's a, a way of sounding good, but but um, not really. Uh, it's, it's, it's a form of like self-worship. And, yeah, it's a, it's and a they, sidestep. Yeah, it's a sidestep, and I feel like, like they, they, they just um totally like not acknowledge the Bible and everything like that, 
And I can't, I, I feel like it's another thing that people do to sidestep the Bible, where they'll just say, um, no, nah, I'm, I'm spiritual. And then therefore it's like, well, nothing they really do counts, um, you know. Um, yeah, there's a lot of popping going on your mic too. A, a lot of oh, I'm sorry. Going. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm in the yes. office. But you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. And it's a total sidestep. And, you know, whenever someone says, I'm spiritual, say your potato. It, that the word is meaningless. It, that that word has zero power. Like there may be some person that says I'm spiritual, and they like play with crystal crystals and like you know place them and chant chakra or like chant stuff to like help their chakras or whatever. Like I may buy that if someone's like you're spiritual. Okay, great. Typically, when people say that word I'm spiritual, that's just a way of saying maybe they're sort of kind of thinking there's a deist god somewhere, but it never goes farther than that. They're like I'm spiritual, meaning maybe something made something. And they don't, it affects their life absolutely zero. So, you know, just say your basketball, say your potato. It, it, it has just as much value. And usually that's see? a counter to be like, well, well, usually it's a counter to be like, well, see, because I, I'm more free in my spirituality. Again, meaning absolutely nothing. It means there's nothing. But they're like, I'm free. I don't, I don't need a book to tell me. And, you know, I don't need the interpretations of man, which stems from a belief or a lack of belief that, you know, Man was given the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by God to create this Bible, which you know takes care of one religion. But I'm, I, you know, they apply that to all religions, including the Bible. Where the claim of the Bible is, you know, I, I believe that too. Like I don't, I don't need a man to tell me stuff. I don't need uh, the Bible to say it's the Word of God. The reason I believe the Bible and follow the Bible is because I legitimately believe it is from God. If that wasn't the case, I don't need a book. I don't have to have a book. I just have a book because I believe it is the word of God that God wants us to have. Um, someone wanted to say something. Was it you, Matt? Um, yeah, I think well, Philip also wanted to say something. Um, Philip. Well, so I think there's actually a little bit of variance and degrees here. I think if you take yourself outside of your Christian shoes and put them into other shoes and you think to yourself, well, I observe in this world there must be a God, and but then you take away the Bible from your perspective and then just start at us, you know, thinking about the ability to actually think that there is actually 50 shades of 50 shades of theism out there. And <laughs> unfortunately, I think that's just the confusing world we live in right now. Everything is inundated with that. There's answers for things magically, but there's no, you know, people look at God more as a magician than, than actually as a, you know, orderly God. Uh, Matt. Yeah. I, I wanted to say, well, um, I don't want to get my uh, private life uh, mixed up in, <laughs> in the talk about the Bible, but um, sometimes I've noticed recently uh, some women say that they're bisexual. And um, I think what they actually mean is they are uh, they're lesbian, but they don't hate men. And so when someone says to you, um, I don't believe in Christianity, but I'm spiritual, I think sometimes it could be at least uh, they want to say they don't look down on Christians because they they believe in, you know, they're not just uh, materialists, um, and that could be an explanation. And I, I just wanted to uh, make a quick comment about um, <clears throat> these uh, damning uh, Bible contradictions. Now, speaking as an atheist, you know, I, I think the Bible is an important historical document, um, and I don't really think a couple of uh, things you've mentioned are actually damning uh, contradictions. But if you look at it, as you said, from the perspective of um, this was inspired by an infallible being, then an, then some atheists might make the argument, well, then there should be, uh, you know, infallible copies of the book somewhere. And that's why I, I um, began asking the questions that I did earlier. Well, yeah, and I, I, I mean, I, I'm sure, I mean, I don't know how else to say that. I want to say, like, uh, yes, like, there, there has to be, and I think many, infallible like you know perfectly copied perfectly transcribed copies of the bible i mean you know I, I have no idea of like a resource or data to show like just how much right like the denominations we talked about earlier is it nine thousand is it forty five thousand is it two hundred thousand like i have no idea to how, where to go to get you accurate metrics but yeah i will claim all day long there are far more like you know perfect like turns out you know ancient monks were pretty good at copying stuff so, you know, with the occasional error or like the flunky monk that got ex exiled or whatever, um, you know, I think more than not, again, maybe Chris would have an actual source to reference, but it just seems from everything we know about monks and monastic life, 
like they dedicated their life to this type of stuff, they were pretty good at their job. So yeah, I think there are plenty of perfect infallible copies out there, which I mean, is why we have them today. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, All right. to well, add, well, to add on to what you were going to say, um, you, you didn't go here, but just to preempt it, because um, it's usually where it goes. Again, not not saying you're going to, but just since it's relevant, kind of. Um, people will say something like, "Well, you know, if your God, you know, wants the infallible Word of God, wants this perfect message to people, then couldn't He have made all the copies? Like, couldn't He have magically, you know, made it where there are no bad copies, there are no copy errors." Um, there's no like discrepancy of an age or something like that. Um, well, sure he could have. And then, you know, the, the common reply is, well, if he didn't, that, that makes me question whether or not there is an existence of God, because if there was, and he wants this message spread, surely he would have. But then my reply wh with this one-sided conversation would be, you know, let's consider the parables of Jesus. Like sometimes his disciples said, Hey, why don't you just speak plainly? Why do you seemingly hide this stuff? Like, why don't you just plainly tell people what you want them to know? And Jesus replies, it's, it's interesting. He says, ultimately, it's for God's good pleasure that these things are given to some to know, yet they're hidden from others. So that doesn't sound like a super good thing if, you know, God wants his message out there and wants everyone presumably to know his message. Yet he's saying, well, God purposely hides it from some people. So I, I would see that, which kind of adds more questions than answers. But that would be the answer. So for some reason, it's God's good pleasure that not everyone gets this message. And then if you read on, like, you know, my, I will give you my interpretation. It's all to do with the intent of the heart. And it's like, you know, the Pharisees knew the scriptures. They knew the words very, very good. But they missed the forest for the trees because their hearts didn't keep up with their head. So it's like they honor God with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. That's the case I believe Jesus is making. It's like, look. For those, who, for those who seek, you'll find. For those who have ears, hear. For those who have eyes, see. But so many people have ears and they don't hear. So many people have eyes, yet they don't see. And that could be for any number of reasons. Like, you know, they're preoccupied with things of this world more than, you know, exploring this eternity with potentially their creator they'll meet. Or, you know, they just have such a hard heart against these spiritual things. Um, anyways, side note, if anyone cared, do you have any uh, follow-up, Matt? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, because I, um, you touched on a few different points, and um, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit behind, sort of uh, commenting on them. But um, so yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a couple of steps behind, really. So I'm, I'm referring to something that you said earlier when you were talking about um, <clears throat> atheists sort of being angry at God and, and things like that. And um, I wanted to make a point about, um, say, uh, Vladimir Putin. Now, um, to me, um, the actions of, of Vladimir Putin and the justifications, a lot of them are, are false, I guess, um, but the possible justifications seem to me um, to be, you know, I, I could never, I could never, I could never, if, if I was in a position to take such, act, such actions um, or make such statements, I would never do it. And I can't understand how another human could possibly do such things. Uh, what are you um, talking about? And exactly? so, yeah, um, because because so so when you made made the comment about um, atheists sort of being angry at God, and I think it comes from a place where, like, I can't relate to Vladimir Putin at all. <laughs> just seems like is not a human. Obviously, is a human, but it just doesn't seem to be a human in any way that I can relate to. Um, and yeah, it's it's in, it's incredible to believe that we have the same type of brain, the same type of body, and similar experiences. And in the same way, perhaps it's it's incredible to be like. So I guess you look around the world and you look at the Bible, and um, the facts that you're that you're acquainted with tell you there's definitely a God. And so it seems to be unthinkable that I could look around the world with my experience and the facts I'm acquainted with. And then come to the genuine conclusion, and I'm sure you're genuine. I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I could say, well, um, you don't actually believe in God. You're just um, uh, you're just um, making a show for certain psychological reasons, and you know. Um, but if we take you at face value, and and we say you genuinely believe in God, then I think we have to do the same with the atheist and say, well, um, maybe there are, there are cases where people um, are angry at God. That's that's definitely a possibility. 
maybe there are some people who become atheists because they initially are angry at God. Then again, um, as in my case, I, I can assure you, I've been thinking about this for at least 20 years or more. Um, I'm actually a genuine atheist who doesn't believe there is a God. It's not a question of being angry at God. Um, although sometimes people get angry at Christians when they're discussing, for example, um, the problem of evil. Anyway, I'll, I'll just I'll pause there. Well, yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I mean, I hoped I was, I, I hope I was, you know, clear when I made that statement that, you know, a lot of the people do fall into that, you know, you, I mean, they're not going to say it, but our, our, um, our spidey senses tell us, yes, they're angry at God. And then you may find out that, you know, although they will still not say they're angry at God, they're, they're basically saying it without saying it, like all the stories and all the stuff they tell that get them to why they think there's no God. But yeah, that's, that's only a part. Like there are, uh, are plenty of atheists at some level. I believe Romans one is true. How everyone knows there's a God, but we, we can talk about that. I don't mean people are, are lying or something like that while they secretly are like, yes, I know, but I'm going to tell everyone I don't. I, I, I believe it's kind of like what we just talked about the parables of Jesus, how, you know, people can, can kind of ignore or put off or whatever, like some, some sense that there's a God so long, whether, whether, not not even trying to, right? It just may inadvertently happen. Like I can grant this to a point where they legitimately, when they say they don't, they lack a belief in a God or gods, they legitimately are sincere, and I believe them. Um, I I would ask them to perfectly reconsider, and I think if they dig deep down, at a point, uh, you know, God can show them, and they're like, oh, I knew this all along. But anyway, so when they make that claim, yeah, I, I think there's plenty of atheists who are, you know, the quote or the espousal is. I can be a good moral atheist without the belief in a god or gods, and I accept that um, at face value. So yeah, there's plenty of them, and a lot of it is well, perhaps yourself, but a lot of them are like, are like Dutch and from the Netherlands, and you know they just they're like, hey, what's about Jesus? Uh, you know, what's this thing about Christianity? And they legitimately they're curious because you know they're, they're looking at religions, they're interested, and in, I'm like, well, what's your experience? Do you where are you starting from? They're like. I'm, I'm an atheist, and, uh, you know, I, I just don't have any churches around. I've never been raised around it. And you can just tell. Like, you know, their motive is pure as the driven snow. Like, they, they just have not heard anything about pretty much any religion. So it's very easy to have conversations with them because they're like, okay, well, well what about this? What about this? And a lot of times they don't even know what questions to ask because they just are wholly unaware of it. And I'm like, okay, this is someone that doesn't ha – is not one of these people that, you know, could be angry at God for some other reason – these are people that, you know, like the Bible talks about, like, how will they know unless someone tells them? Like, they, they just don't know. Um, again, I, uh, with the caveat, I believe somewhere deep within them, they know there's some sort of creator God. Um, but when they say they don't know that, I accept that because for all practical purposes, no, they don't. It's legitimate. So, yeah, I, I hoped, Matt, I, I was clear um, that not every atheist is a God-hating, terrible person. Um, even the ones that have a problem with God aren't terrible people necessarily. But yeah, there's there's all stripes. It's like, you know, there's oh, oh, that's what I want to say. Sorry. Um, when you said, you know, you take me at face value that I look around the world and, you know, I, I come to the conclusion, God, but you look around the world and see, you know, these evil dictators and tyrants and I guess the evil in the world. And you say, well, how could there be a God? Because these things are so evil. Well, under under the Christian paradigm. I I look around and yes, I, I do see the good. I do see God. I, I do, um, you know, see God in this. And then when I see evil, like these dictators and the great evils and atrocities of our time, I totally see the devil. And I'm like, well, yeah, evil doesn't mean there's no God. Evil means there's the devil. And, you know, conveniently enough, like this just goes hand in hand with the entire Bible story. Like, you know, I, I don't have to do much clever linking together or spinning webs to make things match. Like the, the Bible lays all of this out, and, and it just so happens to, to coincide perfectly with what I see in the world. Anyway, that's, I mean, that's in a nutshell, um, kind of my view of it. So I, I don't discredit God because of evil. I fully credit what I believe to be the ultimate evil entity in existence with the evil. Well, you know what I'm going to say now. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say now. <laughs> um, so I don't want to get, I, I'm, I'm actually going to go to work soon. I'll, I'll come back and come back later and see if you're still here. But um yeah, the, the, um, if I was going to get involved in an, in an argument, which I don't want to know, but I'm just making a comment, um, then you would say, well, uh, who created the, the devil and so on. Um, but it, it touches on a kind of a problem that I have. Um, and um, yeah, I, I could sort of get behind the, ex the existence of God if I felt there was evidence for it. 
but then um, it, t as, as far as the evil goes, um, it would have to be, you know, and, and you might, some might say creating evil would be an evil act, like creating the devil could be evil. Then if the, if the theology was that um, God was actually evil, um, as well as good, then that's something I could feel more support for. Um, anyway, that's, that's just off the top of my head. So. Yeah, and maybe, I mean, maybe it would help our case if we took that approach. But, you know, I couldn't in good conscience do that because I honestly don't believe it. But I, I would say it, it seems like we get back to, to, for me, I believe like free will is the crux and limited free will. Not like we can fly. Uh, gravity will impact our free will real quick. But, uh, you know, the, the crux of it hinges on an amount of free will. And it seems like, you know, the, the, the dichotomy usually, I, I think it's a pretty true one, is, you know, either people have free will, thus they can freely choose to do certain amounts of evil. Or if we had no free will, there would be no evil, and we wouldn't really have a use for heaven because we would have heaven on earth. Um, you know, God, God would not allow evil. There wouldn't be evil. We would just be, you know, robots. And then, you know, people would, would say, try to make a tertiary thing and not a true dichotomy and be like, well, if God is God, he can do everything, then he should be able to take away your free will, yet give you free will at the same time and make a squared circle type thing. And, and I'm like, well, no, we'll just leave that right there. So I believe it is a true dichotomy. And anyway, yeah, I, I know you have to go, but um, yeah, I guess to try to hurry the point, um, it seems like free will is the price. So yes, if you want to indirectly blame, blame God for creating Satan, who in turn hates God, hates Christians, hates good, wants evil, then, you know, yes. But typically, um, you know, that would be like blaming a car manufacturer, which some people have tried, um, but it's, it's not really logical to blame like a car manufacturer for drunk drivers killing people. You typically don't say, well, if you never created a, a Volvo, my daughter would be alive right now. You typically say, who's the jerk that got drunk and killed my daughter? But we don't do that with the devil. I mean, I do. But a lot of people are saying, well, okay, God technically created this guy, um, but we're not going to blame the guy that's causing evil. We're going to blame the guy that created the guy, um, which is, I mean, it's fair. We wouldn't do that in anything else, you know, since technically, you know, God I understand that criticism, and my answer for that may not be satisfactory, but I believe the answer is, you know, God created this world and, you know, created Adam and Eve, I believe, literal people, first people that had a soul. And, um, you know, God says, look, now be good stewards with this. There's one thing. Don't do one thing. Well, they did the one thing. They disobeyed God. So effectively, God hands like, I don't know, the title of the world over to humans, and humans take that title, and we're like, okay, well, God gave it to us. Everything is perfect. We're going to take our nice shiny title and give it to Satan. So, you know, Satan has great influence he exerts on the earth. Like the Bible tells us that. It may not make people happy. And, you know, people can still indirectly blame God as like the first cause of everything. Um, but, you know, I, I won't pass that judgment because I believe it explains itself and it has to do with free will. And it seems like for whatever reason, that's just the price God was willing to pay. He's like, yes, I know evil will happen. I know this will happen. I know people will use their free will for good. I know they will use it for evil. Ultimately, I want freedom. Th this is how it is. I, I mean, in, hu in humanity, in every other case, we have we have like catchy lines and stuff like that, right? Like, if you love it, set it free. And if it comes back, it was meant to be, that type thing. It's like, but when God does it, I mean, you know, people want to hold him to some sort of different standard just because God. Which I understand there is merit to it. But, eh, you know, where do you fall on that? Well, that's actually a fascinating conversation. And I think you'd be uh, absolutely the right person to, to have it with. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to look, look you up. So I, I do have to actually go and work. I should be working now. I have to go and work. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that's a fascinating because there's so many things that I'd like to uh, follow up on. And I think we could have a good conversation rather than, um, these things sometimes de or usually devolve into kind of battles about who's right and who's wrong, not about what is true. And it seems like we could definitely have a, a very good conversation about that. Well, of course, yeah, we're usually here on the weekdays. So, yeah, drop by as often as you like. Happy to have you. This was a good conversation. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Of course. Um, Mr. Prince, you're next. Are you uh, speaking? Do you have anything to say? Prince in three, two, one. Robert, what's up, Robert? Hey, what you know, good Nate. Appreciate How you, you allowing me on the stage. I sure. was just wanted to speak in reference of uh, 
Uh, you was your last subject. You was talking with Madden in reference of evil. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I could go to some scripts, if possible. Uh, the first I will go to would be Exodus, the thirty-second chapter, verse fourteen. Because a lot of people don't believe. Uh, well, let's just read. It. And um, I'm gonna go up and start at thirteen. So remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and Israel, thy servant, to whom thou swearest by thy own self. And said it unto them, I will multiply your seeds as the stars of heaven, and all the lands that I will I have spoken of will I give unto your seeds, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So now this was the time when Moses was on the mountain, and uh the the people were down 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 in the valley, uh worshiping this golden calf that Aaron had created. And God said that he wanted to go down here and do some evil to the people. So God has the ability to do evil. All right? And um, I would have also went to Amos. Hang on. What was the verse in Leviticus? What? Uh, I was in Exodus, the 32nd Exodus. chapter, verse 14. And now I'm moving to Amos uh, 3. King James six. Version, correct? Correct. I Go ahead. Um, it says, it reads, Amos 3 and 6. It says, shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city? And the Lord had not done it. Surely the Lord would do nothing but reveal it, his secrets unto his servants and prophets. So it says right here that if evil exists in the city, God is the one who created it. Okay. So um, just to respond, um, I don't think you were here when we talked about, you know, copy errors and things like that. Fun fact, for whatever reason, King James seems to be the last one to catch up to the party. Whenever you find evil, I don't know every instance the King James says evil, but I know a lot of them. Um, like the one that says, you know, I, the Lord, create evil and, you know, um, light and dark, good and evil, things like that. The actual word is 45. Yeah, and seven. yeah. The actual word is calamity. But for some reason, the King James has a penchant for calling these things evil. So, for example, disaster is used in the Leviticus chapter and verse. But King James, for whatever reason, seems to be the last one to catch up to the party. So just to note there. Right. So but, you know King James did not write the King James Bible, right? Uh, yes, I think. I, I hope most people are aware of that. Awesome. Yes, sir. So I think where you were also reading at or quoting from was Isaiah 45 and 7, where it says, I formed the light and created darkness. I made yes. peace and create evil. I, yes. the Lord, do all these things. So yes. knowing that God is the creator of all things, you have to also add uh, evil in there as well. Yeah, and that's where we get back to kind of first cause, right? So if someone wants to blame God, because, you know, I, I, I believe, I, I hopefully you would believe too, but whatever you are, but I, I believe that, you know, God created Lucifer, and he wasn't surprised when Lucifer rebelled and, you know, did these evil things. So I don't believe God's like, nope, I created a perfect being. I didn't create anything bad. Um, and then he's like, oh, oops, I, I don't believe that happened. I believe God knew because in Revelation, we're told before the foundation of the world, the lamb that was slain, talking about Jesus on the cross. So before anything was even in existence, in some way, we know God's plan was always going to be to be Jesus sacrificed for the sins of many. So whenever Jesus or God created Lucifer, um, he totally knew he was going to fall, he was going to be evil, and the redemption of Christ was going to be necessary for mankind. So in that sense, sure, if someone wants to nuance that and say, see, God created evil, I'd be like, yes, I believe that too, but that's, that's quite a trail I had to go down to make that case. So I would say it differently. Um, like yeah, uh, so Abraham. If you, well, well, well like yeah, so neighbor. if you – well, almost done. So yeah, if you wanted to make that case and say God is evil because of everything I just said or God creates evil because of everything I just said, sure, but – 
then that's also different from the, the text though. So it, what we actually believe, yes, that. But as far as the text goes, evil is not the correct word to be used there. Um, in Leviticus, it's, it's disaster. And in, I mean, the closest English we have. And in Isaiah 45, it's calamity. Just saying. So you, you get where I'm going? Like, if you're trying to use those cases to say God creates evil, I would disagree and say those are the wrong words used. But if you're trying to say on a theological point, God is responsible for creating Satan, which in turn is evil, which, you know, you can indirectly trace back to God and be like, see, because of this, God created evil. Then I'd say, yeah, sure. So, so I just now, think there's a lot better ways to get to it. Right. So now when his name was Lucifer, he was the light bringer, the morning star. And then when God found iniquity in him, he changed his job. So this, this always existed. He said, I just changed your job. No longer are you the light bringer. Now you're yeah, the destroyer. The so now you're the, you're the destroyer. So when I want something to destroy, I go send you. Right? Because when you said no. God knew, when you said God had to that. know, like, like when you said God had to have known Lucifer was going to um, condemn himself or would you say uh, create sin? <clears throat> that would be the same thing saying that he knew Abraham um, was going to go kill his son. I, but he didn't kill his son, and God knew that. No, 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 no. He didn't kill him because he stopped him. But God knew right. he was going to stop him. He said, now I know that you fear me. Right. God didn't learn something at that point. I'm sorry. I'm That's... sorry, Chris. I'm talking to Nate. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, well, Robert. Well, you can talk to me, well, too. Well, for oh, the record, it is popcorn okay. style. And by the way, under oh, okay, okay, and, no problem. I just wanted to make sure it was clear. I didn't want to later on get down here and get to talk, and then somebody say, "Oh, I'm talking to you." You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to, you know, no disrespect. Go ahead, Chris. What you want to annotate? Yeah, because, as long as we're not all talking over each other, I like people to be able to pop in. Yeah, right. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Right, because I, I saw I in the script is, it says, "Now I knew you fear me." Now, I'm sure God knows everything. I couldn't argue about that. But right here, we can't argue against the text where he said, now, being that you have done this act, now I know you fear me. Well, it sounds like Chris was about to say something to the contrary. Go ahead, okay. uh, Chris. God, God didn't learn something at that moment. This is what we're calling anthropomorphism. I didn't, I didn't say insane. he learned anything. Okay, so, but he didn't change his mind. Nothing changed. He didn't. Learning. He said, now I know. Changing. Right. He, well, so that would be learning something, right? If you're insisting that he's saying, now I know. Where that's he that's exactly. Before, that, right. Because right. that, we the, can't change the right, script. Again, and does, it does read that way, right? But again, you have to read the Bible in context. You have to understand literary devices. You have to understand grammar. And what you're doing is you're taking a prima facie reading of the text Pouring hmm. meaning into it, which is called eisegesis, and so it'd be like, coming out it'd be, with. Yes, yeah, so it'd be like um, he had a told Adam, um, "I know who you talk to," instead of asking him who told you that. All right. Well, no. Yeah, it, well, yeah. It's, I mean, it's like it's like kind of like he know who told him that, but instead well, yeah, he it's, just it's asked like, him who told. Well, him yeah. That. It's like say it's like, wow, Chris, is that your phone that's buzzing to death? No, that's that's. that's oh, funny. is that Robert? No, I'll probably, oh, okay. I'll but, probably but, but that, it's, that, that was me. I was I was going to say something, but I was trying to wait till you all finish, and I had my mute, my mic off, and that's my my clippers. I'm a bar. I'll probably. I'll oh, probably. okay. Uh, let me say one thing, and then we'll get you in. And also unpreached, uh, find a place and jump in. But yeah, I would say that's like you know God when he when he's talking to Satan in Job, and he's like, Hey, where have you been? Does anyone think God didn't know exactly where Sim, uh, he he was? Like Jesus, you know, later tells us, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Like God knew exactly what Satan had been doing. But God's like, hey, where have you been? So, well, I don't know. Let me ask you, um, Robert. So in Job, where God says that, does God not know where Satan was? Or is God just we, like, hey, we, man, where have you been? We, and he's like, yeah, I, I know. We, we couldn't argue um, if God knew. I, I couldn't argue the point of God knew or didn't know because I imagine to believe that he knows all Right. Well, the Bible says so, he knows all. God right, says, but when he but, says God knows everything. Right, but so now if he knows, I mean, being that you said and in that essence, why would he give you free will? 
That means I know every outcome you could take. I don't know which outcome you're going to choose to take, but I do know the outcome of each one of them you so try to choose to do. I have to like, believe he, he knows exactly the outcome you're going to, every single step. I believe every single So thing why he would he go tempt Abraham if he knew Abraham was going to do what he said? Well, because regardless <laughs> of what God knows, like from our perspective, yeah, we have no right. idea of the future. So from Abraham's perspective, wh why would he tempt I, him I, for I, Abraham's no, benefit? No, no, no. No, no, I didn't ask you um, what was Abraham's perspective on it. I said, why would he have done that if he knew the outcome on it? Well, the Bible tells us the answer. The Bible says everything is for God's glory. So uh, then so if you, you say, say well, everything, you know when you put everything in there, evil also exists in that everything. Yes, and more fun Bible facts. So, you know, the Bible, the Bible tells us that, you know, even evil, what the devil, what the enemy meant for evil— God can use for good, i.e., for his glory. That doesn't necessarily, on the, say, just reading the text, right just, just, yes. huh? what well, just reading just the text saying... like, oh, sorry, what well, well, just reading the text like you do, um, you know, you can't necessarily say that because what the enemy meant for evil, God can use for good. Based on that, you can't say God, um, you know, hoped for evil or God so, wanted evil. So Satan running around here and does some evil. Do you not know that probably? Oh, he got a call. Uh, while we're he, we're waiting, Prince, uh, what did you want to say? Yes, I just exactly. wanted to add into what to Robert was saying. Robert, let me watch this, Robert. Let, let's go to Deuteronomy 32 right quick in verse 20. And the Lord said, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. Does that say that he know what their end shall be, or did he just say, I will see what their end shall be? Sound like he said, question? yes, sir. It sounded like he said, I'm going to see what the end is going to be. <laughs> okay, let me read that again. Well, 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 hang on. Well, well, hang on. I feel like I just need to have an Old Testament Bible open all the time and then, all the time. and then a New Testament Bible also. I would say that if I do that and oblige you, which we should all be just having the Bible, but it seems like you want to exclusively deal with the Old Testament, so I can – uh, that's fine. The I know, cool. This is the first time but, I responded. I, I'm, I go from the law to the testimony. We're going to go to the law, too. Don't worry. But I'm just wanting no, no, to okay. expand but, I mean, I'm just that. saying, you know, it would probably behoove us to also look in the New Testament a time or two. So, you know, for example, you know, Scripture is Scripture. These work in unison. So, so reconcile what you just said in Deuteronomy, peace be upon it, with Matthew 1030. Jesus said the very hairs of our head are numbered, and it's amazing. God is all-knowing. He is aware of everything about us. Um, and there's um, – I'm, I'm going to look for it now. There's one thing that just is a declarative statement and says, God knows everything. But how do you how do you square that with what you say that seems like there's wiggle room that maybe God doesn't know everything? But then the verses that say things like, you know, God knows everything. All right, Nate, let me ask you a question. Did the Lord give you free will? I believe so. So if you got free will, that means you got a choice to make, right? I believe so. So when Joshua in, 23 says, choose this day, who are you going to serve? Is it going to be the God of Abraham or God of someone else? Now, that was a question he asked. He said, who are you going to serve? Is it going to be the God of Abraham or somebody else, right? Didn't you not just say that? Yeah, yeah. And he ends up so with saying, Lord, for me so and my the, health. So do yep. the Lord know who you're going to choose to serve? Because if he did, what would be the point yes. of the lake of fire? Wait one second. What would be the point of the lake of fire? And what would it be, be the point of him coming with a reward to give every man according to his work? If he already know what you're going to do, why would it be one, one more question before you expound on that? Why would he Let me make some notes? Why, if he know what you're going to do, why would he write your name in the book of life? And also it could be blotted out. If he know you are already not going to follow him, why would he waste his time writing your name in the book of life? Just to be like, well, I know he's going to mess up down the line. So I'm going to write his name in the book of life for now just to say I did it. And when he mess up, I'm going to blot it out. Let's make sense of this. So, OK, well. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Well, okay, it wasn't Chris's was neck. Just I, I, okay. Oh, was it uh, Chris? It was no, no, no. It was, it was I'm pretty sure. I, I just have. Uh, so oh, well, key. well, whoever whoever was speaking, un, if it was, I was calling on whoever said that, I thought it was Chris, but unpreach. Yeah, go ahead. That was me. And then yeah, Phil. you know, it, I I just feel like okay. Um, Prince, are you suggesting God is the only audience? What do you mean? I'm I'm confused. So your questions presume that you're, you're putting the onus on God. You're saying there's a book of life. There's all these different things, right? Is that for God's benefit or for somebody else's? What, the book of life? The ad, the, the admonition? I mean, whatever, all of the questions you just asked, you're, uh -huh. you're presuming that God does not know something. So he has to document all these different things or see all these different things happen 
in order to understand it. My question is, are there other, are there other people watching who may be seeking to understand how things play out? No, foreign he, deities? Foreign yeah, what, what he was saying was he gave you free will. That means you have an option. Now, if you had well, an option... Hold on, you're, you you're not letting him answer the question. He, he no, knows yeah, that. This, He's this asking popcorn. a question to understand your point. Yeah, yeah, Philip. This popcorn. The, uh, so, no, um, right. It was okay. I didn't mind Brother Robert um, asking the question because we actually studied on the same. And if he say anything that, that, that differs from my, what I would say, then we both would stand corrected any time. Like if I said something different for what he his what the Lord has increased him with because the Lord gift increased. So sometimes the increase that you may have might differ from the increase the Lord gave me. So if he was answering, you see, I didn't cut him off. I didn't mind him answering as a man, you know what I'm saying? Because at the same time, I, I did jump in on his conversation and what he was saying because we both studied from the same class and we both understand this Bible at least with the same expansion. You see what I'm saying? So, so what, you got what, like the same precept package and all, all that. Sure, what class is no, that? No, we don't have a Pretty precept all package. Your, all your thought, no, or... no, no, we don't. We don't have a precept package. We don't. <laughs> we got a Bible. That is. All I got the is Bible. Bible. That's what you call the Bible. Yeah, yeah. all I got is Bible. King James Bible, sure. right? Precept upon precept. Both, both the King James Bible. I'm just trying to figure out where you're coming from. So King yeah, James Bible. Yeah, we're we're both yes, King James. Okay. Not the new. So where did the Jesus? Oh, okay. So let me ask. Go so ahead. let me ask you a question, because th- and this is going to the preach. I'm um, preach basically asked either one of you, since I guess you guys speak as one now. Um, what audience is God speaking to when He actually says those things? I will see what your end shall be. I will see what their end shall be. Is that what you're asking me? I'm That's asking you. You made some uh-huh. presumption. Speaking. God is speaking who? He's speaking to Israel. He said, I will see what their end shall be. He's always talking to Israel. And he uses his angels to talk to talk through Israel. So so I, I can't tell you if he was sitting there talking to an angel at the end of the day when he said it, because we would have to go into the text and start from the top. Well, you know well, my, what I'm well my, so my question even goes beyond. Okay, so my question goes beyond that. Let me Let me repeat it this way. All right. You reference the idea of free will and God and God knowing something, and mm-hmm. or whether or not He knows something. Mm-hmm. Right? So my question is: is is God the only audience in which is seeking to know or not know something, or are there other? Oh, people? he got his angels out here. He got his angels out here. He got seven okay. angels watching you at all times. So okay, angels, cool. okay, yeah, great. Angels are your audience. To be honest, right. they're the ones who go back and report with that ink horn. Okay, so right, so then. So then this is my question. Is it possible for God to know everything and for others to discover what God already knows? If that's what the text reads. What, no. That we're, we're <laughs> oh like, I'm just saying. This so, is you guys are not the least bit genuine in your answer. Right. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I know I said I like popcorn style as long as people aren't talking over each other, but it sounds like uh, at least three people were talking at once. So let's just, you know, okay. everyone take a breath. And, and while you take a breath, let me just bring up the thing we talked about to tie up this loose end. The scripture I was referring to, I'm going to read this in the King James. 1 John 3.20. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things and knoweth all things mm-hmm. so i don't know where to go with that other than i many, believe the bible how, um, how many things does he know how many things does he know all all, I'm all. Say all but all, all things. but chris all, right, all doesn't yeah. mean all all doesn't mean all chris. So, so, um, so now, it does now so philip chris is making our point yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Take what the Bible says seriously, then, right? Hey, we- so, so, so now we know we we're not arguing the point if God doesn't know or knows everything. We know God knows everything, right? Okay. So now well, what we're saying is, when you're given free will, that's an alternative motive that you can do. That's an alternative choice that mm-hmm. you can make. He knows that choice too. Okay. But he don't know so whether or not you're going to make. Wait. It. Yeah, he don't know that choice. Yes, he's going to make. Wait, so well, so, okay. so so when he told uh, Abraham, I'm confused. So he doesn't know all things, then. That's it, Chris. Wait, it no, doesn't, time. See, he doesn't one know all time. things, Chris. Wait, help! No, no, wait, hold on. Let me see if I understand you correctly, because I I don't I, I don't know how you could if somebody keep talking. I mean, you're kind of like I, I'm I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to ask a question. Go ahead. Would you like to 
explain what you're saying. I have no awesome. idea. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. I like to explain that. Appreciate that. So now if you're given free will, that means you can go left or right. God knows both left and right. But just like Prince just brought up, if he was had a, if he knew or, or presumed that you was going to do left, 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 up all the time and wasn't going to make it into the kingdom, he wouldn't make a he wouldn't have a reference to have your name in the book. Okay, right. I have to ask you a question now. So well, I'm going to ask I, you a question that's logically, Robert. Question is, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering how you asked the question and I didn't land. But go ahead. I'm going to, but I, this is a, this is some important. I'm going to ask you this is some question. See, so just follow me because it's going to be a couple questions. So God knows all things, right, Robert? See, the thing is this: we get thrown off. Hold, hold on, answers. hold on, right fast. I'm simply you, asking logically. You question us you, in the middle of our answer. You hold on, fast. Land, bro. Hold on, fast. This is somewhat important because if you skip past this point, this is what everybody's trying to get to. But you does God know all things? Land. Does God know, know all? He, he might have does brought God know... about to say, but you got to let us land, and then you come in with your question. All right, Robert, finish <laughs> your finish what you were saying. I thought you were yeah. about done, but clearly you weren't. So go yeah, ahead. He said and... he wasn't done. Yeah, Robert, go ahead and finish. Hey, yeah, you know, whenever you're that. giving answers, let's try not let's try to be quick, so it doesn't make other people you know bash their heads in. And when oh, we're yeah, questioning, yeah, yeah. let's try to give a little bit of room for them to awesome. answer. So, so, so basically, what what I'm going to say now, I'm I'm going to yield my answer and to give a, a question to Philip or whomever wants to answer this question. So, when God said Abr to Abraham, "Now I know that you fear me," what did He mean by that? Okay, so I'm going to ask you a logical question, then I'll add, I'll finish this up and I'll answer that question because this isn't hard. Robert, does God know all things? If, if this, I could, if I could, if yeah. I could direct you, um, I know you say it's going to be easy, but it's not. Um, you, you said your answer to the, the question he asked was quick. Could you give us the it, quick answer and then ask your question? Yeah, the quick answer is that because God actually shows his audience that he actually has shown his actual glory or he's actually shown those things doesn't mean that he didn't know before what the outcomes would be. The issue is we didn't know what those outcomes would be. So the issue is God's not constrained by time. We are constrained by time. But when because God actually works within time, that he actually has to show us things through time. This is, if you take time away, then you maybe have a, a point to what you're saying. But with the actual constraints of time, you you cannot actually just parse that verse and say, well, God didn't know. God already knew the answer. He's speaking to somebody. This is like me saying to Chris, like, now that I know that you're, um, that you're a Bible believing Christian, I'm willing to have this more um, sensitive conversation with you, except for the fact that if I was God, I would have already known the outcomes of those things. So with Chris, um, you didn't know that he was a Bible Christian, whatever you just said. You, you didn't hold, know. Hold on. Hold on. Right. I answered your question. I'm going to be really quick and answer. I just want to answer, ask you a question, Robert. Does God know all things? I would agree. Yes. So God knows everything. Yes. And God knows which choice you're going to make within the free will that you possess. I don't think he would do that. Hold on. I'm going to answer that question. I said, does God know all things? And within the free will that you proclaim, does he know which choice you're going to make? You you don't know what choice you're going to make. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about God. So I simply answer God, the question. Does God, God know the, does God know, this so, is very quick. So, it's a yes or no. Does God know the choice that you're going to make in your free will? He said he didn't know where Abraham was going to make a choice. I'm asking you that. simply to answer the question. If you can't answer okay, the question, so, I'm going to take so it. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to answer for him. If the answer is not explicitly yes, the answer is is no. It has to be. So we we Correct. read First John one what one what three twenty that says God knoweth all things, and He agreed. But then when you ask Him, is there something God doesn't know? The answer is not automatically yes. Therefore, the answer Therefore. is what we are all hearing is is no. Like Correct. whether you want to say the words no or not, if you're not saying yes, then the the answer is no. Um, you don't have yes. to say no for the answer to be no. If you don't say yes, the answer is no. So and and therefore, fine, you can, you right, can, you can right, have your right. belief. Uh, but... Awesome. Yes, sir, Mr. Nate. So I'm going to ask you that question since Philip pronounced Yes, God it. knows. God knows everything. <laughs> so, so why could you respond on how and why God told Abraham, now I know you fear me? Well, Philip answered. He said for the benefit of the audience. And I think I got benefit from that thousands of years I'm, after I'm the fact. I'm going to say that wasn't, that wasn't an audience there at that time. That was an angel 
that appear. No, us right now. That, We're the audience. People uh, reading I'm asking you about writers. something that is read. You just read, and it said, now I know. So what's your perception on now I know? It's the same way as when it says God repented. Did God actually, like, repent? Or is that a literary device? Like I think Chris said earlier. Like, so that's, that's, so that's if he repent, that means he didn't do it. That means he, 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 he changed his mind on doing it. The evil that he was going to go down Does to that do to make those a mistake. I mean, the evil that you said he couldn't do or no. wouldn't do. That he said, I'm going to repent of that evil that I'm going down here to do to these people. Well, as we talked about, the word is not evil. That's not the right word. But, um, but yeah, that's, what you said, what... except it's not evil. So, well, that's also like Sodom and Gomorrah. Like, what's your thought on Sodom and Gomorrah? Like, when, when, lots, you know, when, uh, when they're like, hey, what if we find this many righteous people? What if uh, we find uh, guys? Uh, uh, you can you, you mute your, yes. Oh, hang on. Well, can you mute while I finish bringing it up? That's super loud, Robert. Yeah. So he's like, you know, uh, we, we, um, if we find this many righteous people, will you spare it? Guys, like, sure. He's like, okay, didn't do that. If we find a few less, will you spare it? Sure. If we find a few less, will you spare it? Even by what you believe and don't believe, it, it sounds like based on what you already said, you're not going to. But right before you said it, I would think even you would say that, no, God surely knew that this city was doomed and this guy was not going to find the required amount of people for God to spare them. But to satisfy the, the questioner, God's like, sure, go find them. And then when they see all of their own that this city really is rotten and needs to be destroyed, that was why. Not because God didn't always know this was going to be destroyed. What's what's your take on that? God didn't know. Also, I'm glad you brought that up because he first thing he said to the angels that was walking with him, he said, "Should I reveal to at to Abram the evil that I want to go do to that I'm going to go do to Sodom and Gomorrah?" He said the evil that he was going to go do. So this, so you see right here, God, when you brought out this scripture here, it shows you that God does do evil. Does give that, us the verse. Give us the have, verse. Give us the verse. It doesn't say that I know it, but give us the verse. What is it? No, I just find it interesting. Whenever people pull up that word "evil," it literally means in the Hebrew "raw" or "disaster." Yep. So it's, it's not. Yeah, evil. we've talked about uh, that so, a lot this so morning. So I never, I never <laughs> actually defined what evil was. So I, I just know yeah, that it's well, in the I'm book. Kind of but you, like, you seem to made it like it's. Oh my gosh, this is so you know, disingenuous. I'm, I'm sorry. Like it's because we. <laughs> this this is like such a waste of time because. This is more about this is more about winning an argument you came in for this no, than actually having a genuine conversation. We don't want to hey, do priest, we just had a question. Words, you came right. So if if your intention of saying evil was to point people in a completely different direction of meaning, and then when I brought the actual answer of what that word means, now you're saying, well, I didn't mean it that way, right? So that's, just that's, not, that, that's not what I said. That's, that's <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. That, that's oh, literally what you said. Yes, I can tell what you that. said. I can. I can Hang on, I'm gonna cut the clip. Said, Let me cut the clip. Uh, this is gonna be in YouTube yeah. for everyone to see. Yeah, there is a rewind. Yeah, cut the clip. Please, yeah, you literally clip. said it, bro. Yeah, just cut the clip because that's that's not what I said. I said I didn't give a definition. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of what evil? That's is. what we're saying. You said. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, the good news for everyone is I only have like 10 minutes, and then I have to go anyway because I got a lunch appointment. But, Just um, your fire. Is there, is there a new direction in the last 10 minutes we can go? That may only take ten minutes, because we've been at this what an hour. We could, uh, I mean, we've well, unpreached. We What's could, up with unpreached? You, I haven't seen you, well, in a while. Yeah, man, a lot's happened. Uh, long story short, got promoted, moved over to Chicago. Now I'm a director and a pastor as well. So life is Chi Town. Good. Yes, sir. Which part of Chi Town? I mean, you south don't side. have to tell us if you, if you want to. Yeah, I'm on the south side. So is that the good part or bad part? I, I don't know. <laughs> I know where the, I, know. I know where like, when you say South side, is that the, uh, is it below Michigan Avenue? Uh, possibly. I'm off of 119th. Well, I don't live okay. there, but that's, but I mean, what the world we're in, the North side was just, you know, you had that, um, shooting. From yeah. 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 So it, it doesn't matter at, at this point, anywhere on the planet, there's craziness that's happening. So but, what, um, do, what do you preach? i um, preach. What do you, what do you teach? What do you mean? Wait, what, what, what do you mean you teach? Well, I mean, you, you, what do you teach? You say oh, um, yeah, what do you teach? What do you preach? What do you preach I'm about? Seventh-day Adventist. Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. So you're Protestant. Uh, yeah. uh, no. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, 
<laughs> you I see you don't understand, Philip, but it's okay. Restoration, though, then you're unfree. Right, 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 right. So, so you you go to church on uh, the the Sabbath. Yep. Right. Saturday. Mm-hmm. You have a Christmas tree up in your in your church on around oh, Christmas. Kill me. Oh my gosh! Uh, the last two minutes is just a garbage dumpster. <laughs> um, Peach is actually, even though I don't agree with him theology on anything, he's a great guy. And he actually is an honest broker, and I could have an honest conversation about where we differ in our beliefs. And I mean, this is the difference between you and him, Robert. Is I'm preach actually, we can have a conversation that's actually sincere and actually genuine, and we don't go into this idea of trying to say we didn't say things when we said things. Yeah, and Philip, I, uh, I, I understand. I understand why you're. I you understand, I Philip. I understand what you're saying, but you, you obviously you don't understand what I'm saying. So I just ask you, I'm preached. Uh, you're a Protestant. Uh, sure. I guess I'm protesting some of the practices of the Catholic Church. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. So, are you, you a Protestant, uh, Robert? Just out of curiosity. Celebrate. No, I'm a Christian. Oh, what's a what's so you, a Christian in your what mind? Does Can you that define mean that to mean? You? Yeah. What does that mean? To hey, you? hey, Philip. You know that's kind of like disrespectful when I'm trying to have a conversation with unpreached. But I mean, it's popcorn, so you can pop up in here and pop out whenever you. Well, the, you know, if if you want to understand what Seventh Day Adventists believe, just go literally write Adventist.org, and all of the fundamental beliefs are there. Everything we pick is from the Bible. Yeah, yeah that's you know, a that's, very nice website. Well, Thank well, you. Well, they actually do hey, have a nice website. Yep. And well, we, hey, uh, that's a question. Well, well sorry, I'm preaching, but I yeah. wanted to say just since we're on the same topic. Um, so, for example, let's see how this goes. Um, when someone asked Robert uh, what he was, he said Christian, so that's good. I just want to see if this is the same way Unpreached answered. So he said, Unpreached, what do you believe? He's like, go to our website. There's our fundamental beliefs. So, Robert, in the same way Unpreached answered that, um, what would you say your fundamental beliefs are? Is there like a, a website or can you just tell us real quick? Like oh, what your fun, you said yeah, Christian. Yeah, so what yeah, are your yeah, fundamental yeah. beliefs? Not a problem. I believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you can find us in IOG. We're located also in Chicago. IOG? Okay. Is that is IOG.com? Israel of God or something like that? Yep. That's exactly right. Oh, okay. IOG. Oh, the Hebrew Israel. Israel. Oh, yeah. So do you believe that you're Jewish, Robert? Jewish is not a not a word. It was created by Esau. Oh. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Okay. So not, let me ask com. you a better question. Do you believe that you're a direct descendant of Abraham? Yes. Isaac and Jacob. Okay, you do. Okay. And I'm just curious. Um, do you believe in circumcision? Well, in the eighth day. Yep. So you were on the eighth day, you were circumcised. I wasn't, but I'm. I practice. Oh, it. interesting. Oh, interesting. What's interesting about the fact he wasn't circumcised on the eighth day? <laughs> that sounded gay, is For the record, what's interesting about that? For the record, since no one would point me to the website, I have found it. If anyone wants to know what you know, Robert's beliefs are, and ah, oh, um, you beat me to it. I was just sending it and, to you. Prince's <laughs> what is are. it? <laughs> it's the the it's the Israel of God dot com. Can you can. Wants to check it's that a out. good website. Can you IOG, post right? It to the top? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Hey, I, hey, we but, appreciate that too. It's funny yeah. how they hide. How they hide behind their own beliefs. They can't actually say out loud what they believe. It's like you have to like dig <laughs> like through thing. like you, so you're much ore to get to it. You're, you're really funny. Hey, you know, <laughs> you're really funny. Hey, let me say something like quick, Robert. Do you know why we don't come in a, in a room shouting Christian and Hebrew and whatever else? Because we're not, you're not biased. What? What's yeah, the, that'd wait, be the key. <laughs> wait, let me get a second. Let me get a second. I, I, I tr y'all know I allowed everybody to speak. I don't cut nobody Go off, ahead, right? The thing is this, right? We're not biased, bro. We're not here to do the work of Israel. We're not here to say we're not here. Like Titus tell you, don't get into some foolish questions and the genealogies. We're not here to tell you. Well, look, I'm Israel. I'm a stump on you. We're not those people, bro. We in here to be edified and to edify and be corrected and to correct. It's not about whether where we study at. It's not about if we Hebrew Israelite or not. That's the that's not the end game. The end game is getting the salvation. And how do we do that as a people, as the sons of Adam? All of us, black, white, Gentile, Shemite, Hamite. That's what it's about, right? Because we're all the Lord's creation. Me and Robert, not those guys you think we are. 
So please stop assuming because y'all coming in in the name of the Lord, right? So the first thing y'all doing is laughing at us and casting judgment on us reading the word of God. But so do you think I'm a real, let me ask you a question. Do you think I'm really Jewish, Chris? Do you think I'm Jewish? I don't know. I don't think. We don't don't sure. What makes me Jewish? What makes me Jewish? What makes me Jewish? I'm asking you, you're claiming to be Jewish. What makes somebody Jewish? Dude, you, you, you couldn't even understand this thing. Because if you were a Jew, you would be from the derived from Judah. You didn't come from Judah. There you go, you guys. I'm not Jewish. Do you hear that, Nate? Okay, so hang on. Hang on. For the record, just to reset as, you know, the only mod whose room this actually is. Just just saying. I don't think I've mocked or laughed at you. So, you know, just, just want to, you know, give credit to who's you, you doing what they do. Wait, you, you, did, you, did, you, you did laugh, laugh Nate. You heard, the, you heard the mocking and laughing in here. It might not yeah, be. you did laugh, Nate. It was in Oh, okay, my bad. Okay, my bad. Wait, what part did I laugh on? What did I, what did I, hang, hang on, Prince. When, what, when, what part did I laugh when on? He, when he said, oh, do you think you're an Israelite? He said, yes. And then he said, well, uh. Well, you're, or uh, why do you think that? You said, oh, because you're not, and, and then you laughed. It was, it was, it did seem a little disingenuous uh, when that whole oh, okay, thing fine. came. I just, okay, yeah, then was, my, my most sincere humble bad. apology. Okay, okay, great. But the point yeah. is, you, can, um, you can't, you can't uh, tell someone what they are or what they aren't. That's not. Oh yes, you can. You well, can totally well, tell okay, somebody what they are. Or they Wait, aren't. stop, 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 stop. We're we're getting so far away from ourselves. This is this is stupid. I know it's um, ten minutes. So of fun. the re- the reason I so if someone says I'm an atheist and I love Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I can absolutely say you're not an atheist, right? Assu- assuming you that's know, not up to you, Nate. or whatever. It's not up to you. But right? That's not up to you. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Stop everyone! Like... Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Philip, shut up! Wait, I don't know up. how you got up here, Bob, but um, so yes, if someone says you know I am whatever, and clearly they are not, then yes, you don't want to participate in their self delusion. You can say no. You claim to be this thing. But the definition of the word is not what you say. It's contrary to what you say. Therefore, you are or are not this thing based on what you say. So if someone says, I am a Christian, and there are no gods, they are not a Christian. Get it, Bob? So that's the point. So if someone says, I'm a Christian, I believe Jesus, and and it's just like a doctrinal issue, and then people saying, well, you're not really a Christian, well, then they don't really have a way to to say that. In their own mind, they don't meet the marker for Christian. But something as abstract as what we're talking about now, where, you know, when the first thing they say is, uh, you know, I'm a Christian, and then I'm like, well, can you define that? I put the ball in his court, right? I'm like, tell us what that means. And the first thing they say, like, you know, you would, you would just expect, based on this whole conversation, but you would expect if someone says, Nate, you're a Christian. I'm like, yes, what's that mean? I'm like, a belief, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died, death, burial, resurrection for your sins. You can have eternal life through him. Christian, Christ follower. It's all in the name. The big, okay, you, you said that. It seems, sounds like you're a Christian. At least you're saying the right things. But if someone's like, I believe in the God of Abraham. It's like, if that's your leading statement, and based on everything else in this, and the website they just sort of alluded to that I had to dig around and find, then that that is not the definition of a Christian. If they say they're a wait. Christian. Not, not, can hang I, hang can on. I prove you, can uh, I prove no, 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 no. Sorry, guys. Thanks for being here. I have like three minutes left, and I'm not going to be interrupted. Anyway, so that's the point. So, sorry, Bob, you're wrong. And it was a good enough conversation to the other guys. What was your names? Robert and Prince. It was a good enough. It's tedious. We have these conversations all the time, um, ad nauseum. Um, but it was civil enough for a while. Um, you know, telling Philip he's not a Jew, telling you you're not Christians. Um, Asking me whatever. Christmas tree. No good is – no good is – yeah, yeah. No yeah. good is going to come from this. I agree. So, Mycroft – as I often say, which here's a question, Chris, square this. If you say squared circles cannot exist, um, there have been multiple times I say to the Christian audience that if you're a Christian and you're in this room, this is the room that if, if you're a Christian, this is the closest to hell you will ever be. Can each room that I've said met multiple times in be true? Can there be multiple singular rooms that are the closest to hell Christians will ever be? Because this is definitely one of them. <laughs> I was just in a room yesterday that was pretty close. <laughs> Mycroft, you got a minute. You the have internet, no idea what we're talking about. What, hey, I, I, I think Bob is it. I, Bob must be Canadian because he sounds a lot like Kevin Trudeau and you know all that liberal, you know, hippie stuff. You can't tell somebody what they are or what they aren't, or whatever. But Maybe we just ask him what a woman was. Patently obvious. Yeah, I, I, exactly. For the I, record, my pronouns are Archmage and Billionaire. Archmage and Billionaire. Okay, yeah, 
Are we allowed okay, to so use the synonyms of billionaire? Uh, what's... Oh, it's what whatever I, mean? I feel like calling you. Greedy. Whatever those, you know, the synonyms no, are. No, no, no. Go with... You're okay. Discriminant. You're discriminating against me. Anyways, um, I do have to go. But yeah, Chris, so can e multiple rooms each be the closest to hell a Christian will ever get? Yes. Okay, uh, Mycroft. After, after uh, this conversation, <laughs> I just believe in squared circles. Uh, Mycroft, you have a minute to give us your thoughts on a conversation you have no idea what was about. Yeah, I, I, I came in on the, the end of that. And uh, uh, strangely enough, I heard Philip say something. I don't remember what it was, but I actually found myself agreeing with him which was strange it'll happen um, every once in a while it'll happen every once in a while Hell just got a little we, serve, we serve a good god minecraft even if we don't like to minecraft. we still serve a good <laughs> minecraft yeah <laughs> i'll take it no i, yeah. I don't know man i you got that i don't know why this has this room has to be open so freaking early like i it's only seven forty one here and i'm just getting my bearings in the morning like god you know nate needs to move away from florida although florida is a great state to live in you, you, uh, need to, you need to move out of the pagan land that you're in and come to the promised land. Yeah, I, I, I'm in Arizona, and it's supposed to be conservative, but God dang it, we have too many flipping liberals here and too many illegals. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> now we're going right back off the, uh, the reservation. We're going down the dumpster. Right. Well, well I, you know, I'm conservative. What can I say? I'm extremely conservative, I, and I make no bones about it. I think you're more um, right leaning than conservative. I don't think Bill Buckley would line up with you much, man. Well, I I don't know. I I liked Bill Buckley. I mean, uh, he was a great arguer, even though he was the one of the most disingenuous MFers I've ever heard in my life. He's the he movement very, of the conservative well. movement. He is literally the founding father of what we know as like, uh, you know, yeah, but what when, we would call during, conservatism. During what he, it's not what he believed. When he argued, he argued. Very, very well, although very disingenuously. I, he would I use would, vocabulary I don't think so. as a weapon. Um, oh, yeah. He, well, he and that's for me as a debate coach. Um, as for me, as, no, no. I, he, listen, there's no, there's no connection between him and Paul whatsoever. Um, but um, he, he was a, a fantastic debater. I'm fantastic, mostly because he, he was able to weave a certain disingenuousness that his opponents was ne were never able to catch. And um extremely intelligent extremely bright i i loved him as a debater uh i loved him he was fantastic but um anyway yeah i i uh no i'm extremely conservative right-leaning i think they're synonymous um no they're not and, uh, <laughs> well not you can all. disagree with me but I, I i think they're incredibly synonymous not absolutely but incredibly um you know, I for the for the, well, moment, for the you, record, prob you probably Trump is the Messiah. I take it. Uh, no, I I don't think Trump is conservative enough. He's not conservative at all. He's well, he's not right leaning. He's not right leaning enough, if that's what you want to say. He isn't at um, all. You know, I for me, I would go house to house to get rid of the illegals, house to house, uh, if I have to. Oh my you know. gosh! Can we talk about something else besides? Besides how Minecraft wants to go and like but export Trump everybody. Philip's secret love for Trump. Well, and 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 certainly the Black Hebrew Israelites would be among them. If you oh, don't like this country, I, yeah, they could, they John Sanguinia, go back to Africa. Oh my gosh, you're, Bye. you're horrible. Like first of all, first of all, saying something like that is kind of racist. Just to be what's not racist? The Ghanaian tourism minister said, "We want you back, African diaspora, bad. Come home, good." And I, you know, if you've been in any of these clubhouse rooms where all their people okay. talking the about how they're star think, seeds who want to go back to Africa, the reason that you think, hold on, the reason back. that you think that for, for the record, hang, hang on, hang on, big disclaimer, that, that my make... headset was off, my headset was off for like twenty seconds. Uh -huh. What was said in twenty seconds? He's saying well, to go well, back to Africa. Africa. He's literally telling the Black Hebrew Israelites to go back to Africa yeah. and say that's not racist. No, it's that's not. not. It's absolutely not racist. That is completely racist. No. If you get if, me banned again, if, if, if you your loyalty is not to the United States of America alone, if your patriotism can be questioned, 
go home. Okay, so, so your patriotism has okay, nothing so to we, do we with loyalty so to the, the country. So if a white per- so if yeah, that's a, if a, that's white a bullshit lie. Have yeah, you served in the military, Mycroft? I've actually served in the military. I, I actually. I was a combat have, contractor for five years with okay, the Korean Okay, a combat military. contractor. A combat yeah, contractor is not right. serving, and it is not a is not a badge. You got paid a lot of money. That is not the same as serving, and just bringing it up makes. You're absolutely right. It was not serving, but I did a lot more damage out there than you. No, you didn't actually, because I've worked with in contracting. I worked with General Dynamics. I actually worked in these days. I was in the Indian Air Force. I was a combat medic. I I understand, and I had three combat tours in the 82nd. I Africa, have three combat tours. Oh my North gosh. Korea. None of those why things actually mean matter? anything. Yeah, like, Japan. Can I ask you a question? Contested why islands in Russia. Oh my gosh. They, like, I, I don't understand. You're all talking about serving, and I'm, I mean, I've served oh, 22 years. Hold on, hold I've on. I've served 22 stage, years. So if I, is that a problem for me to go ahead and do that? Is that a problem for me to, to have served 22 years in the United States Navy? And now you all talking about military people and somebody showing patriotism. What's going um, on? Well, I got rid of everyone else so I could hear my thoughts. But yeah, I've got like two seconds before I got to go. But um, I don't think I heard anyone. Wait, are, are you asking if it's bad to be in the military or show patriotism? If, if so, I think they were both saying they had affiliations with the military and they were all expressing patriotism. So... If you're saying patriotism bad, nobody's saying that. Is that your question? Okay, well, well, Nate, no, it's just that, you know, they, they wanted to go ahead and incite two groups that I am affiliated with. I am a 22-year oh. vet, twenty two year veteran. And then on top of that, I identify myself as Israel. So how how is that? Um, how how would that be a problem? How would that not show patriotism? I mean, I know who I am. You, I don't know what nationality you came from. I don't know if you came from a uh, 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 German or, or or Dutch or anything like that. But nobody says anything about where your lineage came from. It only happens when I say something about mine. But wait, you didn't say anything right unless you said something in chat and they were talking about it no what i'm saying is they put a blanket cover over they put a blanket cover over so i i do have to go but what well first of all i didn't say anything about anything and i missed like uh, 20 hang on hang on and i missed the 20 seconds that sparked this all so i'm trying to herd cats but i will say what it sounds like they recapped is if you're a certain race which one guy said it, if you're a certain race and you're not patriotic, then I guess go back from whence your ancestors came is what I think he said, which everyone was saying, no, 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 no. But that's that's what I heard the one guy say. But as for me, yeah, I don't care about in any of that. Like, if you're patriotic, good. If you're not patriotic, then, you know, consider going somewhere else, regardless of where your ancestors are from, what you look like, what your color is, anything like that. I don't know, don't care. So... That's my personal standpoint, if anyone cares. If you love this country and you like it and you, you know, you like the Constitution, you want to build it up like the foundation, the founding principles, and, you know, you support these things that are long-held American values, you know, um, climb up as far as you can and then, you know, pull other people up with you, rising tide and lifts all boats, that type of thing, then, yes, be patriotic. That's what we mean by patriotic. So anyone that likes that, great. Be here. Help us grow. Help us get better. My God, we need it. If you don't, you're like, no, I hate you, hate your government, give me some flags over, and ah, I hate, hate, me, hate your country. Well, then, you know, consider leading. Like, that's my stance. But um, I understand. Yeah, give I, us a quick I understand thought. that you have to leave, Nate. Um, I, I, uh, I wonder, do you want me to go ahead and continue your room to be open? No, or no, 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 no. No, no, I'm shutting this dumpster fire down. I'm putting, uh, uh, yeah, if, if like, if like, if like God could, I know He promises He won't flood the world again. But if he could flood Clubhouse like I'm about to, yeah, this, this has to end. But, oh, okay. Yeah, Chief, well, we'll be back. We're usually back here Monday through Friday, so if you want to jump back in you know, tomorrow or any other time, we're usually here around this time, and I usually stick around longer than I am right now. Okay, well, yeah, I definitely want to have a conversation because, you know, that sounds very, very uh, small-minded, if, that, if I can use that term. But wait, for who? Surely not me. For with anyone said, right? who was saying what they were saying earlier, it's a very, it was a oh, small-minded sure. comment. 
yeah, sure. I certainly wouldn't add the race component. That that's too narrow sighted. I, I would add the anyone component. Like if you, you know, if you, I mean that that shouldn't be controversial, right? And again, I wouldn't add the race component because why? It, it's not nearly broad enough. I'd be like, if you are anyone unpatriotic and who hates us, hates our way of life, hates our country, then you know, go somewhere you're happy. Um, but yeah, I, I don't agree with the race thing. Anyways, thanks for being here. We'll see you maybe tomorrow, perhaps. But I have to go, everyone, and you can, yeah. We'll see you all later.